Okay. <clears throat> I think... I think now's probably a good time to go through the rhetoric coach stuff, I think. Okay. So, we're going to go through the rhetoric coach folder I've got here. Collated by the top diggers. Okay. So let's see. How do we how do we feel about Thomas presentation? of the rhetoric coach, linguist, linguist, marketing, linguist, whatever the fuck, debate coach. How do we feel about the claims of that over time? We've got a good few clips to get through here. And we're just going to go through them, okay? <clears throat> so this one is, I, I I looked at the first two here. I think this one I think is pretty egregious. This one was not very egregious. But I've seen most of these before at some point. I just don't really remember them. So we're just going to go through and see how we feel. I'm not going to make any firm okay. statements. We're going to evaluate them on the fly. That's what we're going to do. I think that's the best way to go about it. That's the fairest way. So this one's from what I saw earlier. This one was totally fine. Um, yeah. Things. So I like I well, work in I, linguistic mm. marketing. One of the things that I have to explain a lot is concepts to people and the way that these things work. And they concepts always have fuzzy edges. They always have fuzzy edges. They are never like hard lines. Like this is where you stop being a man and start being non-binary or start being a woman. Those things don't exist in conceptual ideas. It does. It's not a thing. So for you like to bring those things up, it's not a point in your favor. You're just explaining how concepts work in general. Okay, so a few points on that one, I think. Yeah, I work in. I didn't catch up the first time around. I don't believe he was currently working there at that point. So yeah, that is a slight misrepresentation, but we can't forgive that one. I think I think we can allow that one. My issue is the way he's using it, I think, here. Because I don't think get, I don't think his experience gives him any position to talk about the way we talk about gender. And yeah, it's using it as like a, an argument to feature as like an appeal to authority to talk about gender. I don't think that he has any any backing to, to talk about gender in this way. See, I'm not I'm not too concerned. I'm not gonna sit here and argue about like what is the definition of a concept and what I'm not too concerned about the validity necessarily of what he's saying. It's more about the way he's using it. I, I specifically care about the way he's using credibility. So all right, that one, not the worst, but that is a little bit. There are a couple points there where I do take issue with it. Minor, minor. Let's hear this one. Not only do they not even care about the politics stuff, I, it seems like they don't even want it. Like, they would be happy if all politics just disappeared off the platform tomorrow. They would, I'm sure they'd so. be much better off for it. So, Probably. I, 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 the, like, I agree with you as far as, like, principally the way that we look at these things. But, and I agree with you as, like, you know, I, I'm a rhetoric coach. Like, this is what we talk about. It's, like, breaking down this sort of stuff and, like, people aren't convinced by logic and that sort of crap. But not everybody is capable of having these sorts of conversations. People, I, I get into debates with people all the time where they're like, no, we're not allowed to talk to people like Nick Fuentes. Destiny's doing something wrong. And I'm like, no, if you talk to Nick Fuentes, you'd be doing something wrong. Destiny's not doing anything wrong. He's Agreed. fine. He can talk to him all he wants, but you can't talk to Nick Fuentes. Like, right. And I think that that's the part that's important. And it, YouTube seems to handle this very responsibly. I have Groypers on my show. We get into debates about like uh, Holocaust denial and all sorts of stuff. They'll take my video down and I will challenge it and appeal it every time and say, yo, I like I am effectively putting pushing back against this stuff. I am very easily tearing these arguments down. I've done this for a long time. I used to be them like I know what I'm doing here and they'll put it back up every single time they put it back up because I think that they handle these things very responsibly and they look at it and they say, oh, OK, like some people actually can engage in these arguments. And so if they are, we'll put them back up. But the video that you showed that they took down where you say, like, people aren't aren't smart enough to understand the difference. I would say, like, yeah, that's kind of the problem is that if we are platforming these ideas in an irresponsible way where nobody's pushing back whatsoever, then, yeah, like, it's kind of an issue. So, yeah, there Tom's saying he's a rhetoric coach and that gives him the authority or the 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 expertise to be able to debate gropers to be able to successfully defeat gropers and conspiracy and misinformation debates and all this monk stuff. super shattered five dollars no. five dollars from monk great showing on kick or keep best part was the realization that everyone was jewish thank you for the five dollars monk and yeah it was great it was a great time on kick keep enjoyed it um 
it, so he's saying he's a rhetoric coach. So before he was saying, oh, I worked in linguistic marketing. So well, no, you specifically said that you're a rhetoric coach and that that gives you the, the expertise to defeat groupers. And that you should be allowed to defeat groupers on YouTube when other people should not because of this. You're saying you're better than the average person. You're better than the layman, one might say, uh, because of this. So I think that's a pretty poor use of these credentials. I think that's pretty crazy. All right, next clip. It, it's not that I don't care. Um, it's that I, I, I tried to balance. Um, I, I tried to balance, you know, the entertainment value with the criticisms. And I, I don't know if there was like, I don't, I can't think of like a better way of going about it because I, I am a rhetoric coach. I, I like a rhetorician in real life. Um, I, I could have just laid out the logic and, um, and been like ultra nice to them throughout the entire thing. And absolutely nobody would have watched it because it just would have been super boring and, um, and like, you know, like methodical in a way. And yeah, I don't think anybody would have watched it at that point. So I think I had to like add in a lot more entertainment value and, um, kind of be a little bit spicier. I've gotten tons of comments, tons of DMs. I know Chud Logic has as well from people who were fans of them. And like they felt like not only did the video make them think of them differently, but also them refusing to respond to it afterwards or even engage with the critiques afterwards made them think differently about them. And so I do know that it got through to a lot of people and I think it did what it was that I was hoping for, but I understand that there are like, I'm not going to be able to please everybody. So I think that clip alone honestly proves my point. I honestly think I could stop here and just be like, yeah, well, I'm just right. Because he said there, I'm a rhetoric coach and a rhetorician in real life. That's a fucking insane presentation, dude. Especially with the stuff you're using this for. The, the topics you're using this to express authority on. You're fucking out of your mind, dude. You're out of your fucking mind. You're out of your gourd. <clears throat> but we're not going to stop there. My point is not proven. My point will be proven when I have gone through every single clip in this folder. Then my point will be proven. So we will continue. <laughs> Yeah, there's oh, a ton DK of people that I did debate go. coaching with. I I can't ever like talk to them Wait, or talk you, you about it unless to, I go. You don't need to ask, ask someone to be a reference to like say that you worked with them. So that's what yeah, there's a ton of people that I did debate coaching with. I I can't ever like talk to them Wait, or talk you, you about it to, unless I go. You don't need to ask, ask someone to be a reference to like say that you worked with them. A ton of people you debate coaching for. So I believe Tom has clarified since this clip, or at some point, that he was never paid for debate coaching. When he says debate coaching, which, what he means is talking to other streamers in Discord about how to do a debate better. Which, okay, sure, whatever you want to call it, man. Whatever. That's okay. But, I, like, I... Yeah, sorry, these clips are all from the last 12 months or so. And it's been going on for four years, so guess i can understand i actually like was doing debate coaching for a while and helping people who i disagreed with make arguments that i didn't like and i would like or that i i wasn't on board with right i would help them try to like get better arguments for what it was that they were trying to get across i can look at somebody's argument that i disagree with or that i think is a is dumb and say it's a good argument and so i think that I think that, yeah, she saw those as, like, conflicting statements. Meaning, like, if you say it's a good argument, therefore you agree with it. So, yeah, then again, that's more debate coaching. Okay, whatever. This will debate coaching, sure. Whatever, dude. Fine. Let's hear this one. It's from President Sunday Preston. Because I'm curious, Tom, I forgot about this earlier in the in the chat, but... You said you're a rhetoric coach? 
Yeah, so I worked in what like a position called linguistic marketing for a while. So it's a uh, like where you like study uh, specific types of language to use for ads in the most like convincing way. And they would do like, study all sorts okay. of different uh, ways interesting of, like, phrasing to conclusions on these things. Okay, so you, um, you went you went to school for that. That's that's no, I didn't go to school for it. I took oh, classes on it. Okay. Just oh, specifically classes? for this took business. Classes. But, yeah. What's a what's a class though? Because I believe it was a training course, a, a job. I don't know that you would necessarily, would you call that a class? Because class implies it's done at an academic institution. I don't know that that's true. Yeah, sure enough. Okay. I, but I like the, sorry. You don't dude. know what action bleed means. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm saying, I'm saying I do know what action bleed means, but the, the, I don't know. Somehow the way that she ended up meaning it is the same way that I took it and I don't know if it's like a, a massive coincidence or what, but yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay, cool. So Sunday got, got a good press on him there. That was a bit more clear than, than some of his other ones. Still a little bit weird, but clearer than a lot of the other ones. Obviously, yeah, like Bug's saying, he knew that Sunday was not going to swallow his bullshit. He, he knew that Sunday would, would throttle him. <clears throat> All right. Let's, let's see this one. I yeah. like I advertised myself as a debate coach or a rhetoric coach when I first started streaming. Um, and so that's like mostly what I did was just reviewing debates and helping other people with their debates. So, yeah. Yeah. It really bothers me. Like. Okay. So I advertised myself as a debate coach. I've done this as well. So I've said numerous times. Taken away. It may well be that, that something is referred to as a class within the job. However, uh, the fact is that when you're talking about a field of study like linguistics, if you say classes, it carries with it the implication of an academic institution. That's the point. So it's within the context he's using it, it would it implies academic. I don't call myself a linguist, even though I'm like a linguist by trade. I don't call myself a linguist because that brings with it like the weight of a degree in linguistics. And I don't want to like confuse people by. So I believe we have heard him call himself a linguist. Ever saying but, stuff but like this. So Tom doxing, not surprised. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm always doxing people. But the. Yeah, that's a linguist by trade. I don't call myself a linguist. For this reason, sometimes I will say a linguist by trade, but generally I try to just say I've worked in linguistics. Um, but there have been a few times that somebody acting smug coming on here being like, oh, actually, Tom, you're wrong about that definition because uh, <laughs> I actually looked in the dictionary. I don't know why you didn't think to look in the dictionary before talking about gender. You could have just looked in the dictionary instead of just writing an entire document, giving an entire theory. You could have just looked it up in the dictionary and just seen the definition there. That's all you had to do, Tom. Just look it up. And I like I will go off so quickly and sometimes yeah i'll be yelling at them like i'm the freaking linguist here and i shouldn't do that it's stupid it's it's cringe i sound like a freaking idiot when i do it i it, it is it is so bad and i hate it but it happens okay it happens it happens to the best of us um but it can, it really can piss you off when People get really smug about something that you know you know a lot, a lot better. Happens than about, we've all been on there. Topic, we've all been and there. They're still gonna sit there acting like they know something or like they're telling you something. So it's we've all fudged our credentials it, online, haven't we? All right, next clip. Keep going. Keep going. No breaks. We will get through all these clips. That and online politics. Yeah, I think it's team sports. I, I talk about this all the time. So especially when I was like doing more like rhetoric coaching and talking more about convincing language, I said this almost every stream. People don't choose their beliefs based on what is right. So this always, this one is just so bizarre to me. The, the way he presents it, it's like, how the fuck does your course in linguistic marketing for, for where you wrote paper or scripts for 
Pizza Hut employees to use. How does that give you the authority to talk about this? Coaching and talking more about convincing language. I said this almost every stream. People don't choose their beliefs based on what is rational or what is logical. They're not convinced into them. People choose their beliefs based on the group that they want to be a part of. So say I am this like alien who just got transported onto Earth and now I'm a human. And I have all the human instincts and I'm just a human grown man. And I'm in Georgia. I'm likely going to be like a very Christian Republican type of person. I that's because that's what's beneficial to me. It's not just that I want like that I'm being like brainwashed into this because that's what everybody else believes. It's also highly beneficial to me to believe these things because I want to have friends, because I want to um I want to be able to make connections and network with people. I want to I want other people to like me and believe what it is that I'm saying. Um and so I have to repeat the same things that they're repeating. I have to say the same things that they're saying. I have to fit in with them. And <laughs> this is just how our human brains work. We are, we Dude, are it's highly over. malleable. It's over. And we are pushed into <laughs> believing things for... I'm doing something terrible here. I'm killing this guy. <laughs> uh, for social reasons. And then once we believe I the should thing, be playing these clips. Then we figure out reasons to believe it. We Most of our beliefs are, are backwards. We start off with a belief that we want to believe, and then we work backwards from there. So like all of the Kyle Rittenhouse talk, like every all of those people, you can tell it's blatantly obvious. They start with the belief that they want to have and then they try to rationalize it from there instead of starting from like ground zero and being rational and then coming to a position well so yeah that's so that's yeah. why i think most people end up with weird beliefs well next clip oh this is a good one i remember this one where did your I definition saying... come from Oh, okay, so I work it, in linguistics. Because it ignores science and people no, are specialists. No, okay, I yes, work in did. linguistics. Definitions, we come Don't to definitions based on colloquial usages. Okay? Gender is a word that we use to describe masculinity and femininity. And so with masculinity and femininity, those are words that we use to describe what is more likely from a male or what is more likely from a female or just what we generally associate with it, uh, like social... Um, uh, what do you call it? Like social norms. I have uh, papers on this. I have videos that are used in colleges and in universities. I Which the, like gender is my specialty. I would love to see them I, and read them. I I can the send them to out. you. Yes, I can send it to you. I like this send is my this I, I, is what I I focus. I read on. and so talk am, to professors who deal with this shit. Like I'd love to read the papers that you're talking all, about because it sounds like fucking garbage. Are all yes. professors? Oh. Excuse me. I don't know why my <laughs> are all professors going to agree? Are all educated opinions going to align? No. So uh, the thing that they will agree on, yeah. yes, true. the thing that they will agree on is it's they totally will agree true, on the you process. Fundamentalist. That yes, that it Dave. is. They will. They will agree that Davey there is a process to come to definitions. That they will all agree that there is a process to come to definitions on words, and I am using the process that we use to come to definitions on oh, words. Yeah. That gonna, is I'm what gonna, we will all agree on. We'll and agree so, on that. At, one point, at what point, though, does that clinical I, use I, 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 become an obstruction to the actual so, discourse? Though? So, Tom, That's have you read when you refuse big to? Yes, when you refuse to add in context, that's when it will become an obstruction. Is when you refuse to allow context to change that's what a correct. word means. So, I, first, I, I, I agree like, with you on. You will always use the same process to come to a definition, but the definition will change based on context and, uh, like, in colloquial usage, can even change based on what is colloquial, right? Like, different areas have different meanings and different norms. Anyways, so the thing is, is that. I like everything that I said is scientific. Everything that I'm saying is linguistic. Everything that I'm saying is the process it's that not, we though. use. It's not. To come... You're literally okay, ignoring what science, and then everything you said. Did Wait, not I didn't have to say anything about science. science. So you I just didn't saying, say anything about I science. I am super into Everything. science. 
Every, you saying, I'm super into science, I fucking read science, and everything I said was scientifically I correct is immediately fucking this. wrong. I it's didn't say you this. Taking... You are already making stuff up. I did not say this. You literally just said that. No, no I did not. I said linguistically. I am talking about linguistic processes that we used to come to definitions. I didn't say anything about science. You just said, you said it's based in science. Oh my God. You know, the science of linguistics. No, no you just I said didn't. Based in you just Sorry. did, dude. Okay, right? if I said based in science, I, I may I don't think I said that. But if Which I said was based a huge in science, thing, and my then bad. I called it out, and you're like, I didn't say that. You exactly okay, said that. I don't think I said that because my For issue the sake. entire panel, my issue the entire and this panel is what you was guys that do you people. What do you mean, you people? This is what you my do. My issue the you entire panel is that this guy kept making up stuff for my positions where he kept arguing against things that I wasn't saying, right? So I at no point was actually saying that biology attaches to gender or that it's part of my definition. And I said it over and over is that bio biology has nothing to do with my definition of gender. Like it has literally nothing to do with it. It's not like attached to it. It's not the thing. And that if we all agreed, if it actually turned out that um, that literally nothing that is masculine is more likely because of biology, my definition for gender still wouldn't change because the colloquial usage wouldn't change. And so just, it is all the same. Masculine and biology has tied those two things together to go against what you just said you were not advocating for. So are there any Tom Sweepers, Radical Coda, Kankamore, any, anyone that kind of sweeps Tom a little bit? Is there anyone still defending the idea of, it, of him using his credentials properly, of him? Have we got any doubt? Is there any doubt? Are we going to keep going? I'm not relenting on the clips. We will, we will finish the clips. I wanted to check how many there are, actually. So, yeah, we're... <laughs> we still got quite a few more to go. We will keep going. But I'm just wondering, like, what's... I'm getting a temperature check. Like, how are you... Does anyone who was skeptical about this beforehand... Has their opinion changed? We'll keep going. We'll keep going. <clears throat> oh, there's a 30-minute clip there. So what... Oh, that's the sick that's the sick debate that might be that might be one for later because that is 30 minutes long that is when sick fully presses him on his credentials uh, so that is a classic but that's like an enjoy that's just something to have fun with that's just have fun with when i was watching you watch it um mm -hmm. there's a point where the guy in the bubble is telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, can come on. Sure. You said, I never say anything about stuff, but it's cringe. But the point is that it shows a, it, it's oh, yet another point, or several, uh, 22 points actually, in the pattern of dishonesty. In the pattern of dishonesty. When I was watching you watch it, um, mm -hmm. there's a point where the guy in the bubble is telling me, I don't know what I'm talking about. I've never read any of the literature. He starts asking me if I've read different uh, linguistic philosophers. And and I say, like, bro, I worked in linguistics for a long time. Like, I, I've written papers on this subject. Mm -hmm. I In this case, so I say I never do this. But yes, in this case, I did do this where I'm like, I know what I'm talking about. Like, at least... Like, well, sorry, Radical Coda, I didn't read you as clout motivated, but if that's the case, I'll keep that in mind. Fair enough. But I'm still going to use you as a temperature check for the other side of the narrative, because there's not a lot of them in chat right now. Like, I, I'm i never saying it to say I'm the authority, so just sit and listen while I teach you. I'm saying I am worth engaging with here. I am worth listening to and then giving a response to instead of just throwing away everything that I'm saying because you don't think I know what I'm talking about or you don't think I've engaged with the literature. I'm I'm trying to defend myself to say, yeah, I've I know enough for you to engage with me here. Um, Is that what I, he was doing? Like, that last clip? I think that that's an OK thing to do. I think it's OK to challenge people on whether or not. They have any education in what they're talking about. And I think it's okay to defend your education and defend your knowledge on something. So yeah, this all just seems pretty insane. Writing papers, this is all this is total cap. It's it, writing papers is either the gender doc or it's the scripts for Pizza Heart. We'll keep moving. Or maybe they wrote internal documents, maybe. But even then, this isn't papers. That's talking about uh, yeah, education. It's just, it's, yeah. 
We need to skip the sick one for now because it's 30 minutes long. We don't have time for that right now. Uh, let's get on with, with this one. <clears throat> I think that this would actually help you. When I was doing debate coaching, I would always look at the people that I was going to talk to and think about what it was that I, uh, that they believed and then tried to like write down, like I would type it up, like, okay, what is it that they believe? Why do they believe this? And why do I think that they're not convinced of what it is that I believe? Like, what is it about their belief that keeps them stuck there and keeps them there? And then going into the debate, that third thing is what I focus on. Like, you're, you only believe this because you're stuck in this like reality that maybe isn't real. Like you're stuck in this bubble that's kind of got you uh, so biased that you're incapable of seeing outside of that reality. Okay, next clip. So again, some of these are like, you know, more egregious than others. Tom Foley show that just justical that justical guy was trying to have his cake and eat it it seemed where he was like I said it as a passing comment but also I still am concerned but also don't worry about it yeah he was like yeah it wasn't a thing I don't really care but I'll stand by it but also like I don't really have any proof of this but also here's my evidence but also don't like, don't take it so seriously. I thought this one wasn't, this is in the wrong folder. This feels like. Okay, sort of reminds Tom of Queeman. We'll watch this, fuck it, we'll just go through this. Just like make that. sure Jay Stalker is here for it. Unless uh, there's a folder of a name I'm not aware of. Does it include more than I think it includes? Is that the... Is that my accuser? Is that his name, Jay Stalker? That guy's freaking weird, dude. That's such a weird little fellow. Listen, Bug he reminds does me good of luck, okay. Stop uh, the other like guy that guys. hangs around Chud Logic all the time. What's the, what's his freaking name? The other guy that, damn it, dude, I I hate his name. It, I always forget his name. He freaking he looks like the the dirty kid from Charlie Brown that always <laughs> has all the dust falling off of him. Dude, he hates Queeman, me so yes. much. He hates Queeman. me. Um. The, yeah, that, that little Jay that scurries Jay around Stalker Chud. Guy exactly, me of exactly. Clean. That's what he's saying. I'm pretty sure they think that like Sassafras and uh, what's his name, Sassafras and Catnip and uh, in Raider's cat are all the same person because they all have a a cat in their names and in their in their logos. Riveting stuff, Tom. Classic Tom Fullery stream. Monotone subox. <laughs> Kill me. Oh, yeah. This is a fella I know because he's in this chat all the time now. When was this clip? Seventeenth November. Oh, interesting. <laughs> but aren't you a rhetorician need, Tom? Need well that's kind now. of my point is that like I'm out of practice like I haven't been I, I'm, I'm out of practice I'm out, I'm out of practice <laughs> but aren't you a rhetorician Tom well that's kind oh. of my point is that like I'm out of practice like I haven't been I, I've gotten away Rusty. from rhetoric for a long time and job. just focused <laughs> on like the more logical parts because really coming into this space I was not good at logic or philosophy <laughs> or any of that crap and i think it's like probably what i'm more known for at this point but back a long time ago especially initially when i first was on twitch got banned from twitch like when i was uh you know a 10 viewer andy for the most part i just kind of focused on rhetoric and just making you know arguments that are gonna make the other person look bad but um 
and I was obviously, I was coaching people back then as well. So like I did a bunch of debate coaching where we would mostly focus on rhetoric, how to make the other person look bad, arguments to lead them towards so that you can get the dunk on them. Um, <clears throat> and the same, it was around the time that I debated Hake that I think I like decided I, I'm freaking sick of I'm sick of like rhetorical arguments. Like I, I kind of, I'm not great on the logical side. I'm not great on the philosophical side. And so I'm just gonna, I'm going to start focusing on logic more. And I did and probably did a little bit too much to like an autistic point. There we go. Okay. Oh god, like see the Top Four Show, come on man. We all know you got your degree okay, in linguistic oh, marketing degree, and yeah, the right. philosophy of language or whatever people make up about you. <laughs> I did, yes. I have a rhetoric coach degree actually. Okay. Okay, so so he's trying to troll there, he's trying to play into the meme there. That's fine. But obviously with all the clips you're just seeing, it's like, oh yeah, nice ha ha funny, ha ha, except you do. You do do that. I always tell people to do this when I was doing debate coaching, I would always tell people to do this is like, get, uh, like actually come up with what you think the person's going to say and then have like well-worded arguments for all of that, like typed up and actually have it, you know, there so that you, you can literally just have a list of rhetorically sound, uh, comebacks set up in advance. Okay. Linguist, you're going to have to be more specific than that, buddy. I, I've been very clear. I'm a linguist by trade. I've worked in linguistics, but I've always said on everything, I'm not like a linguist, meaning I have a degree. I never went to school for it. I don't have like any, uh, any like academic shit in linguistics. Yeah. I, yeah. Well Always said I'm a linguist by trade. That is not what he's been saying in many of those clips. You can go look at my paper. It said that from the very beginning. Hasn't been edited. Hasn't been changed. My paper. Uh, academic shit in linguistics. I. You can go look at my paper. It said that from the very. Yeah. So that's the gender doc that he wrote. The go the Google doc that he wrote about his thoughts on gender. Very beginning. Hasn't been edited. Hasn't been changed. Um. You can go look at debates that I have with other linguists where I say linguist by trade. Never lied about it. Never lied about it. Never, never, ever, ever lied about it. It's oh, yeah, 2023 to... for me was actually really good. I, I spent like three years with like a with moving from platform to platforming, like getting banned over and over, and then like just sucked, sitting on yeah. YouTube for like a year with just 10 viewers, which was really rough after like doing really well on Twitch and then getting banned, and then just sitting on YouTube with like 10 fucking viewers every single day. And yeah. then, yeah, 2023 hit right at the beginning. My, uh, my shit started to finally well, why did you grow. Keep getting and, banned? What, what was, happened? Yeah, what happened? Yeah, what time with the ban? I, I I say stupid things. I shouldn't say. I yeah. say really edgy shit. I mean, was it was it was it, it, was it, was it, was it was the, the thing you got banned for was saying he's pro pedo porn. They come for being a rhetoric for being like a rhetoric coach. Like I am amazed at your ability to get yourself in trouble. So. Uh, ever since then, Tom uh, has you know. Jesus, was that a startup mock? Becky's girlfriend just mock him. Jesus, it makes me believe you more that you're a rhetoric co coach. Like only oh, only man. somebody who's like a professional could fuck this up. Like yeah, yeah, so true, Christ, that's so true. Yeah. So true. You're really I say, smart. But on YouTube, like I can say all the same Becky's shit, no so problems smart. whatsoever. Yeah. I can we say love way worse shit, yeah. no problems whatsoever. So ever, She's like, so smart. Tw Twitch was just way more strict than any other platform I've ever been on, and I wasn't used to it. And I, Am I crazy? Yeah, I, 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 I thought it feels as if Twitch, Twitch is like, like silly. A... 
That's right. That's the thing. There, there was somebody who typed in chat and said, oh, Tom lies all the time. Did you know that he lied about being a rhetoric coach and it turned out he was just a pizza delivery driver? Yeah, that's, I don't think that's accurate. Like, this is the shit. <laughs> that's like a straw man of what's been said. This is the shit. That could dude. be someone just being retarded, though. This is... This is... But it is funny. <laughs> like, this is what I deal that, with. That is funny to this say. This is what I deal with with people who don't like me. That, like, the best they have is just that's making not, shit up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, nice one, retard. So, yeah, straw manning the arguments, try to knock it down, obviously. Yeah. <clears throat> Tom Fuller shows so anyone anyone NSE disagree with disagrees with about a topic remotely related to psych issues, yeah, the then anyone one. is going to take this stance. NSE is almost better off never mentioning her background. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, this is like I, I've again had the same issue where I've said, like, yes, I I worked in linguistics or I'm a linguist by trade or something like that. But other people take what I'm saying to mean something totally different than what I've actually said. And so then they say, oh, you claim that you're an expert. You claim that you're an authority. You claim that you went to school for linguistics. You claim you got a degree. You claimed like uh, all of this fucking shit. And I'm like, I never said any of that. I'm just telling you about myself. I'm not allowed to like tell you about me and about my background and about my like about the shit that I've been through or the like the the uh you know the information that i have or any of this shit like without people without people taking it to mean i'm an expert like if i'm an expert i'm not fucking debating any of you pieces of shit i promise you that if i'm an expert i'm not sitting around debating people i'm not sitting around like having these uh these quabbles with laymen if I'm an expert, Layman. I'm gonna go debate experts on this shit. I'm gonna go debate people who have oh, uh, if, if, who if. have prerequisite knowledge on what it is that I'm talking about. I'm not gonna sit around debating a bunch of people on a Twitch poll panel. If I'm an expert, not happening. But because I'm not an expert, yeah, no, because okay. I so just because have some expert, information okay. on this, I have some prerequisite knowledge. I have some prerequisite. Uh, He's not, he's not saying he's not a layman, to be fair. All right, we'll give him that. We'll give him that. Uh, uh, like, um, experience. I'm just mentioning this more so to say that this is why I have an interest in these areas or but this is why not, I talk okay, about that's it. Not how he this is it. why that's, I did total, rhetoric like, coaching or debate coaching. We literally use it as an authority, as a, as a point of expertise numerous times. Like, that's about it. But it's not, it's not me saying, like, I know everything. I'm the one you have to listen to on this. Um, I have done that before. I have done that before. But that's more so... It, like, okay, I no, think I have that done that before. Okay. I think in areas Many times. where you're just trying to let somebody know that you just happen to have a little bit more information on something just to get them to, like, take what it is you're saying seriously, uh, I think that's okay as well. So, but It's okay that he does it. It's fine that he does it. It's actually fine that he does it. It's actually justified. Okay. So that's all the rhetoric. These are all from about the last 12 months. That's all the rhetoric coach clips in the last like year or so that, that the diggers, top diggers, could find. So, having watched that, let's get back to the VOD. Keep moving through this. And we'll maybe, we'll take a detour for... Do we have other details we want to take? We might do the sick stuff. I don't know. I, I can't wait to get the Tom stuff all done tonight. So uh, we might do it all. I'm not sure. There's like these random clips. Are any of these relevant, really? No. No, I don't think so. And then there's the Reddit alt stuff, obviously, which we'll go over. <laughs> obviously. All right. Noted like since starting streaming and stuff like is it a service yes. or what's the red okay so yeah. since he started streaming he probably uses a stream to promote the service as well as like a rhetoric coach um and oh, what no, is he what this is was a him saying he had experience a as a rhetoric coach that, oh in that the past basically he misled people on his qualifications to do oh certain goodness. things and be like uh his professional qualifications the titles he's held in order to make himself seem better this is just okay. not, and yeah, so, this just isn't true. So, I've always been very clear. It's just I not true. Qualifications. Always I been very clear. I... That always been very clear. He doesn't have qualifications. He doesn't have a degree. When he's saying he's written papers on this stuff. He says he's written papers and researched this stuff. Without clarification. 
Oh, fuck. Whoops. I would never call myself a linguist because I don't have a degree. I literally had this conversation with Kyla on stream when we were talking about the differences in, in how she was kind of uh, getting in trouble for like degrees and shit like that. And I talked about the fact that like, yes, I don't have a degree well, and similar, I don't claim to be any sort of authority. See, this a... feels almost like a manipulative trick here that he's trying to bring Kyla in. He's trying to basically put Kyla in a position where she feels like um, if she agrees with the criticisms of Tom's presentation of his credentials, then she's tacitly agreeing with the criticisms of her own credentials. This is very slippery. This is a very tricky move from Lex Luthor here. Very, very, very conniving. Job where I bring it up, and because it sounds super official, people start putting some sort of like idea that I'm I know what I'm talking about. But even if you go Sex like Luther. I have it even on the I have a bunch of clips of it. I have it on uh, the like the doc about gender where literally at the beginning it says like I'm not a linguist. I don't uh, I don't have a degree in linguistics, but I've just worked a job that makes gives me an interest in language. Like that's how I've always explained it. But you've definitely brought up multiple times on stream that you were a rhetoric coach, and uh, not went on to clarify. Okay, could well, you okay, actually coach is not I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Language. I actually just. I hear you. I just want to actually hear. And so the issue is that I'm trying to figure out is, is it reasonable to conclude that your audience would have thought that you had certain levels of education that you leaned into it for some level of authority that you maybe shouldn't have? Like these are going to be like the main things, obviously, that matter. So my question is, M, since you were a viewer yeah. at the time. Um, we say a rhetoric coach isn't an official label. So there's no guidelines on how you use it, right? <clears throat> That's the point he's trying to make. Because it's like Aerolite says that in, where is it? Well, it says that in uh, whatever state she's in, in Canada, the... Uh, uh, psychometrician or whatever, whichever one it is, psychometrist, I can't remember which way around it is, isn't an official title yet. There's only a degree or a postgraduate diploma in psych psychological evaluation. So there's not guidelines on how a professional should use it. So that's, that's, the, that's what he's trying to invoke here. Um, when he talked about being a rhetoric coach, do you remember how, like, did he bring it up as just like a past experience? Did he bring it up as like, no, trust me guys, like, I know yeah. what's what, like, okay. He would use it as an argument to feed her sometimes so when can. there was like a stalemate and people were arguing about definitions or something like that. He'd be like, guys, I was a rhetoric coach. I understand this is how language works and then try to proceed from there. So as an okay. appeal to authority is the way that I saw it being used. Yeah, it sounds like an appeal. Would you agree, Tom, or would you say like that's a vast misrepresentation of the situation? Yeah, so the few times I can think of one time that I did it, and afterwards I said, like, that was cringe. I shouldn't have done that. Like, that was stupid. There's other times where I did it where people, like, there's a specific debate that I'm thinking of where people kept, like, pushing me on, like, you you haven't just read this one Tom's time. Just this one this time. Person, it just happened this one time. This. We're arguing over how we. It's just everyone has a moment of weakness, don't they, or 20? Come to definitions. And so I kept saying, like, guys, I know what I'm talking about. Like, I've studied this shit for a long time. I've done this. I've done that. I promise, just go look it up. It's like, I'm right. You can look it up. I promise. Like, it was more so to try to get them to engage with me. Me, but I think overall, in general, maybe not each and every single time I've said these sorts of things, I, I give a big long clarification. But I think in general, I've been very honest with my audience that I am not a, in any sort of authority on these things. Okay. Um, and so, M. Dave, would you do you agree that he's also done like the qualifications? Like, has he done both of these things, or has he really? I, I don't really catch a lot of the qualifications. It might have been more of a point before I came around the community. Uh, maybe he talked about it more then. But since I was part of the community, I didn't catch a lot of that. Gotcha. I, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not personally. Part of his you're history. not the sole. Yeah, you're not the sole yeah. witness. I'm just trying to get a feel of how like the audience might have perceived these sort of things. Um, and do you remember, Dave? What were your What was your thoughts about like the pathological lying stuff, like the clip that we just watched? I I feel like I I half wrote down your quote, and I just want to make sure that I don't. I'm like, pretty sure I, I I'm pretty sure I was pretty accurate in what came up on there. I covered pretty much everything I said about it. Uh, it just him saying well, that the he... issue that Dave's going to have is that he said present tense. Tom is a pathological liar. That's the problem he's going to have here. But Tom in that clip said past tense. The pathological liar, and he likes the game basically. He now enjoys playing the game as a liar. Also, I... guys, now it's actually great. I haven't actually said this in, in, a, in a hot minute, but I'm going to say it now. Okay, guys, please remember to like, subscribe, donate, buy a membership, get a membership, buy a super chat, if you can. Thank you very much. Go to discord.gg slash queeman or twitter.com slash queeman as well. A great place to go. Also, there's merch on my channel page. If you go to the store on my channel page, you can buy hoodies, mugs, t-shirts, if you want to get something for your money. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I was, was 17 sorry. years ago, yes. Well, and it didn't say in the clip when he was using, so I didn't equate it with using. Well, well Boots, okay. Sure, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you with, with this assessment. Why would you believe an admitted pathological liar when they tell you to finally stop lying? But er what Erudite's going to say is, in this conversation, he's already defined it as, any behaviors that someone's exhibiting in their addiction, you know, you can't criticize them on post addiction. That's that's the parameters that she's set for this conversation. And she's going to just fucking virtue signal and lambast anyone who tries to use anything from that time. And I don't necessarily equate dealing with using. I know plenty even of though 
even though I also brain blast, Jimmy Neutron fucking brain blast. So erudite. How come you keep calling Lava Liar when she was fucked on Clonopins? Hmm. Hmm. Huh. 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 <laughs> really makes you think. Curious how she doesn't hold this fucking standard for Lav when it's uh, someone with the black mark of DGG. A marked woman. Clean shot. <laughs> Curious. The DGG Dirty Sancho. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's disgusting. That's gross. That's disgusting. That's ill. You're ill. But yeah, how come this standard isn't upheld? How come this is such an inconsistent standard? That's curious, isn't it? it remakes you fucking think. Don't use. I know that Tom is a recover recovering pat former user, but um, I didn't equate that with what he was saying. I don't think that had anything to do with what he was stating, in my opinion, from what I saw. Yeah, gotcha. Just you know, I'm not. I'm just trying to get all the pieces together because I'm trying to put all this. I'm just trying to make sense. I just want to make sure that I'm like quoting people correctly when I'm taking little notes on everything. Um, okay. Just like just going back to the stuff. So the Sassafras, uh, the rhetoric coach stuff. I feel like I need to flesh that out a little bit more. So he's saying he. New here is this the guy who shares a PC with his family and roommates and keeps new videos his girlfriend sends to him without logging out? Yep, that's the guy. Thank you very much for the six dollars ninety. Lisa's Regu Crystal Light. Thank you. <laughs> Lean on the authority a couple of times, and that was cringe and bad. Uh, but that he actually gone out of his way to also clarify that he doesn't have qualifications. And it sounds like you're being like bull fucking shit. Can you now that you've had bull fucking shit? I said no, that I'm being had the impression from him in the past that he had these qualifications, and maybe since he's been criticized on that, he started going out of his way to say no. I, I like listen. It doesn't actually mean what I what I previously intimated. Which is um, fine. So when you yeah, so when you say a bunch of people thought that he had these qualifications, were Sorry, they a bunch like of people, at least Chud and a couple other people from back then who Chud's referenced? I'm just leaning on Chud for that. Um, yeah. I can go open up the stream and try to find the timestamp for when he references it. But the next thing I'd go on to is probably the sock puppet accounts and then his excuses for those sock puppet accounts, the Reddit accounts. Oh. Um, yeah, let's right. familiar with this one. I don't, know. I don't actually follow drama in this space very well, so you're gonna have to catch me all up on I, all up. I know, because probably most people who do follow drama wouldn't Ooh. be sweeping for Tom here. Just real quick, <laughs> on the Reddit accounts, <laughs> there were two accounts that were kind of put up by Queen that were said to be mine. My sister came out pretty quickly and just said, hey, that's my account. A couple weeks later, maybe three weeks later, I got a video from the other person saying, hey, this is, this is me. I main event. I'm the person who did the Reddit stuff, not Tom. But I just didn't put it out because I didn't want to drum everything up again. Kind of kept it behind the scenes. People who had questions, I sent it to them, showed it to them. It's got his face in it and everything. Kind of, my sister got harassed over the the Reddit accounts, got banned from Reddit. Like it, they took a bunch of screenshots of her like prayer groups and were posting them all over Twitter, saying, "Dude, it's so crazy the victim narrative he runs with here." This is Tom. So I kind of regretted ever including people from my real life in my community, and didn't want them. We'll get into this. this. We'll get so into for this. The most part, I just kept everything behind the scenes and talk to people about it behind that had any questions about it but uh that's okay okay twitter thank you to join us up um do you mind jay if i send this just to <laughs> just to uh tom as well just so that everyone has all all yeah, the sure. seats? it's a queen thread he knows about it yeah yeah i figured he did I just... so <clears throat> let's go over it let's do it now okay i tell you what this one's pretty good this is pretty good i like this this clip it's important. It's I almost like they see it. Okay. So it's <laughs> almost like they prefer. I think, okay, they go. Here's what we'll do. We'll, I'll show you this clip. We'll just show this because they go over my tweet thread. Error that goes over my tweet thread. Everyone knows the tweet thread. There's a video on my channel about it. Everyone knows my tweet. My, that tweet thread is immortal. That tweet thread is everyone knows it. Everyone knows the lines about better Riz than Darius. That's the best tweet thread I've ever made. Okay. I'm like a, a stable chair guy here. That's. Everyone gets it. Everyone's with me there. This is a clip I don't think many people have seen. <clears throat> this is from... No, Boots, this isn't so much work into this. This is months of collection. This this folder has existed for months. This was not made for this stream. I'm just pulling it up. This is just the first time I've gone through this folder really extensively on stream. <clears throat> we might... Okay, fuck's sake. We might pull up a tweet thread. Oh my god, but I have to, the thing is that it's annoying because I'm not signing into Twitter on this browser, it means I have to sign into Twitter, otherwise I can't pop a full thread. <sighs> it's just, a, it's so much work. So much work. Fuck's sake. 
Yeah, Nessa's dead. Oh, man. Let's see. Does this does Chad cover the Twitter thread here? We can watch Chad. While cover. someone links it to me, I've got something else to show you as well. <laughs> Apparently, Tom Foolery has got a fake Reddit account. Okay, this when is what we actually himself up. It. Obviously, I fed this to Chad because I'm a sneaky, conniving. Streamer Destiny Snakey Tom Jay. Foolery has been caught red-handed oh, using Nissa, Nissa was there positive things about himself. Maybe it isn't. On subreddit, okay, well, so well, Destiny and Arvosh. Proof is shown below, and this thread will detail some of the most amusing posts. Revolutionary type to your comment on our Destiny. Oh, I see. So you can see here, this is a notification on Tom's Reddit that someone is responding to his comment. And if you look at the text of the comment here, this is the comment, and this is the original comment that's being responded to. So miserable. So what? Miserable ad thirty-eight. Is <laughs> listen, guys. I don't want it to seem like I'm having a go at Tom. It's obviously kind of tragic. Like, but it's just kind of funny. It's just kind of funny. I don't know. It's just a, It's just kind of. A, oh, there we go. Oh, it's there. Right. I see. That's much more well, clear, isn't it? Nation. Tom Brothers, it's so over. He's blaming his roommate and sister in his Discord. Hey, Tony, thank you for the sub. Wait a sec, he's got negative karma. He's got, <laughs> he's got negative karma as well. What the fuck, man? Oh, Tom, what are you doing? Oh, boy. So this miserable ad is him. I think, okay, are we happy to accept that this miserable ad account, the miserable underscore ad underscore 38 is him? Chud admit it's over. I mean, look, I don't know what's over. It's just kind of embarrassing for him, isn't it? Okay, I've got something else here to look at. Um, okay, well, let's look at this original thread and then we'll look at Tom's response. Okay, so we got we got this. I mean, this is this is conclusive to me, yeah? This is conclusive. So what, okay, let's dig into what he's saying. Let's dig into what he's, well, what this account is saying, okay, which I'm pretty confident to say is him. He streams after working long hours a lot. So he can be a bit sluggish sometimes, but he's genuinely one of the smartest people in the space. And he's a very good voice of reason. People don't like him because he's not terminally online and he's not a schizo. He's a bit too normal for the politics arena, but I think that's something we need. A real life grass toucher. Also, his doc on gender is A++. Tom is fair. Dude, this is so cringe, man. I don't even dislike Tom. I'm, you know, I heard that he said some stupid shit about the recent drama involving me. But like, I don't even look, dislike the guy. It's just kind of a bit sad and cringe. Tom is fair. Oh my God. A bit loud. Jesus. Shouting a bit. Chuck. I tell you what, I'm going to check this oh, Tom guy's hell. content out. It sounds based. Fucking hell. Okay, that's the one we just read. Oh God. What is this one? This is about Grace Thorpe, is it? Oh no. Tom talks to Grace about family after... Okay, so that's the thread. And speaks about trauma, avoid transmission from her. She told Tom she sees him as a father figure, then hit on him numerous times, then begged him to fix her, all while Tom is shutting her down over and over and calling her a sociopath. It's scary. These chicks are all over this guy and he isn't having it. <laughs> Why do this? Why do this, man? I just... Honestly, I just... <laughs> I think, you know, I think it's probably just the pressure of having people speak negatively about you. You know, it, it does get annoying, obviously. It does get annoying. <laughs> but, like, you just got to kind of just ignore it and take it as best you can. Shut on his fair is a meme I just don't think it. writing a fake account to run counter-narratives that is you saying it. Now, it's, you know, <laughs> you're going to get found out eventually. The connection that it's Tom is pretty, it's pretty clear. I mean, you know... This is this is him on his desktop on his browser logged into the account there. So there he is logged into the account doing the R play shit. Okay. And then this is the notification of someone replying to his comment. So he's obviously logged into this account for that to come up. And then you can see here, like this is I mean, I don't know what other explanation there is. I don't know what other explanation there is other than this is Tom doing this. I mean, what other explanation is there? Anyway, we we've stopped reading. What was this comment? So let me let me start again. Man, this is so awkward. <laughs> She told Tom she sees him as a father figure, then hit on him numerous times and begged him to fix her. All while Tom is shutting her down over and over and calling her a sociopath. I am just freebooting It's this scary. Right These chicks are all cool over boy. this guy and he isn't having it. <clears throat> Plus, I'm Darius trying to present, present it. While they were talking, telling Tom to back off because she's his. she's his. Tom and Darius are opposites in every way, including Riz Lamau. Oh, 
Oh god, the cringe is too much to bear. Yeah, yeah, this is my residuals doing the Rich, tweet right, thread, exactly. Content. Obviously, there's going to be some of whatever. I wasn't this is streaming just a bad really take. Thomas Perms, time, I've never seen so. him jump on for more than five minutes at a time. I've never seen him use the DGG embed. He doesn't seem to talk to Destiny very much at all. And he did start playing Factorio, but because of Asan. God, I don't know where you're getting your information from, but if Tom is leeching off Destiny, it's at a very low level compared to people like NSC, Lav, Mr. Girl, Karantos, and many others. So this must have been from a little while ago then, right? If he's mentioning like Lav and Mr. Girl. Dude. Anyway, those are the, the best examples. Apparently, there's another account, which may also possibly be him, but... Yeah, so at the very end, I say, there is another account, you Merilov, that is suspected to also be Tom, due to talking about their faith similarly, and regularly promoting Tom's content, uh, often being the OP of posts Tom replies to on an alt. Now, it does turn out that that is his sister, that is his sister's Reddit account, as far as, far as we can tell, that is true. That last one is. But again, it was never included as a key part, the screenshots, it, there was no... None of those posts were screenshotted. None of those were screenshotted. So that was a lie in what he just said, or, or a misremembering, we'll say. That was a, misrem a little misremembering he did. <clears throat> but it was never presented. That was never a key part of it. It was at the end. It was like, oh, I, I've got a suspicion it's maybe the one because it's promoting his stuff and there's some similarities in the stories they're telling on the Reddit. So maybe, maybe. But it was never, oh yeah, this is Tom. It was always about that miserable ad account. So... That's the tweet thread. Let's go and watch this clip. This is what people haven't really seen. All right. So this is a while ago. This is from around the it's point Yaga drama. Okay. <clears throat> so here you see a post by Merilov, screenshotted 50 minutes ago. And then Tom's posting this. This is a tweet that Tom's put up. And it's got a screen. It's got a comment from Miserable Ad 38 posted one minute ago. Let's watch this. Almost like they prefer their blindness, even when uh, presented with the option to see all of the information for themselves and come to their own conclusions slash formulate their own opinions. You can build a well, fill it with water, and lead someone to it, but you can't force them to drink. The down negative three votes. Like they're downvoting like all of these people hardcore. Um, all of these people. And they're not like, saying anything and... ridiculous. Like, I love that Tom predicted all of this. He straight up said, y'all don't care what's being said or the truth value of the statement. You, excuse me. Uh, you care who says it and who it implicates. You're all perfectly fine being wrong and being lied to. Just as long as you end up on the right team, you people amaze me. Get out, get out of your echo chambers and hear him out. He lays it out <laughs> so that even you people could understand <laughs> <laughs> and he adds in a lot of pretty colors <laughs> and funny jokes so that, that you can be entertained while learning base let's go um no so miserable is um freaking crap uh main event um this is mary right here um so that's main I event, apparently, apparently. Okay, on my so that, computer this... one time thought that uh, All right, so event. listen to this. Listen um, to this. This is amazing. So he's saying the main event is his old roommate, okay? That's, the, that's his old this roommate. This is Mary right here. Right? Listen. Um, this is great. I apparently, on my computer one time, thought that uh, main event, his he was signed in on my computer on Reddit, and I thought it was, I thought it was like my second account or something. And I was like, wait, I don't remember making this crazy. I have two accounts. What? That's nuts. And I started like posting stuff on there. And like a couple days later, he's like, bro, why have you been posting on my account? This is weird. Why did you do that? I'm like, oh no, I thought it was mine. It was just signed in. So I didn't know I had another account. Like, um, so <laughs> he's been told, but he is, the, this this is the story that he's telling us, right? Is that his roommate was accidentally still signed in. He started posting from that account. He got told by that roommate, "Hey, dude, why why are you posting? Why are you posting from my account? Why post from my? Can't you sign out of my account? Can't you sign out of my account?" <clears throat> he doesn't sign out of the account. He's still on it and using it on our place. So best case. Telling the total truth, best case scenario, he's lied to this roommate and is still using this account without permission. Unless he's asked for some, at some point in that time, for now, permission to now start using it. But, so that's best case scenario, from the information we've got. 
Now, here's the problem. That's not someone's main Reddit account. There's no reason he would care about Tom posting from that account. Because that's that's a default alt name. That's when you sign in, you're like when you make a new Reddit account, it will be assigned like a name like that. A miserable ad. That's that's a default name. So it's not connected to this main event guy at all, other than when Tom says it. Now let's just uh let's just So <clears throat> Other than one or two posts in reference to some Keffel's drama, every single post on this account is directly relevant to Tom. It's directly about Tom. You can go through it. You can go fact check this. I'm looking through now. They, they all mention Tom. It's all in threads about Tom. Other than like what one or two posts about Gaffel's drama. The account has not been used since this got called out. Nine months ago was the last time this account was used. And since this drama, the account name has been changed. Since the drama, since we I called it out. I called it out. Since then, the account name has been changed. Well, not the account, the display name has been changed to main event in that time. was not the case before. I can pull up the archive. We can even do it now. But it has not been used. Despite changing the name, it has not been used. So here you can see absolutely nowhere main main criticisms. That is the only mention of main. Now he has changed the name to main event. Well, someone has changed the name to main event in that time, despite not using the account anymore. You can see this posted what one month ago. Do you guys like Tom Foolery? If so, why? That was posted nine months ago. Now Tom Foolery show super chatted one dollar and ninety nine cents. $1.99 from Tom Foolery Show. I still use the burners to go on our slash off schnisty cheeks. Thank you for the one ninety nine. So, listen. I'm just presenting this information. You guys can believe it. If you guys want to believe this was Tom's roommate, that Tom's roommate wrote all these posts, that Tom's roommate had a burner account that was exclusively used for gassing up Tom, yet he was really upset with Tom for using the, the alt account, and yet, despite his roommate being upset with Tom for using the alt account, Tom then continued to use the account for other purposes, but not for posting comments. That's the story you're expected to believe. In addition to the idea that they were both using the same computer on the same Windows login, the same Google profiles. Everything. They had the same everything. That's that's the story you're exposed to the week. That is the level of if that strains any credulity. You need some serious fucking evidence for a story like that. So let's let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Wait, where was it? I think that's the alt stuff pretty much covered there. I think that's all we really need, right? Do we need anything else there? I think that's fine. Just want to make sure that everyone has the active receipts that we're looking at. Um, and I'll probably just post it in the chat as well, so people can pull up. So come in and get some, some extra views on your tweet. I hope X is good too. Good luck, guys. Oh. Okay. Streamer Destiny, streamer and Destiny orbiter Tom Foolery has been caught red-handed using sock account to post positive things about himself on subreddits. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, yes, I was familiar with this situation. This was like months ago, right? Dubai. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I thought this was more recent. Proof is shown below, and this thread will detail some of the more amusing things. For fuck's sakes. Uh, in one post, our slash destiny user asked people for opinions on Tom. This was without broadly negative, other than Tom and is all describing himself as one of the smartest people in the space and that he's only disliked for not being terminally online and too normal. Um, in another, and so the evidence was that Tom pulled up Reddit on stream and he was still logged into miserable 
AD. Is that correct? Am mm -hmm. I remembering this correctly now? Yeah. That's like the evidence yeah, of how he owns He's account. logged into the accounts that we're talking about what awesome Riz Tom has. And, and I said, as I pulled him up, like, hey, I don't have a Reddit account. This is somebody else's. I'm just using this to do the R play stuff. And yeah, I was pretty clear from the beginning that it wasn't my account. Okay. Um, so you still maintain that it's not your account? Correct, yes. He has also entertained many hypotheticals about what it would mean if it was his account. Um, <laughs> Jason, right. Well, while only you, miserable AD, has been proven to be Tom, there's another account, you, Mira Love, that's suspected to also be Tom due to talking about their faith similarly to Tom and regularly promoting Tom's content, often being I the OP believe that of would the be post. Tom's sister. Mira Love? Might be yeah, on Mary. Okay, Mary, okay. Um, so I'm just going to look at this evidence super quickly. So it's a Reddit slash base. Um, it definitely looks like you're logged in. Are you saying that that was your, is your claim that that was your editor? That was my roommate. He did editing for me as well. But yeah, he was living with me for a while and then wasn't living with me at the time. I'm a drawing play gay Reddit game in the first place. You know, during our slash play, so while this drama was going on, like me, Bug, uh, I think a couple others in Discord were just sitting there camping Tom and Emp Dave whenever we saw them play squares on Tom's logo and just trying to <laughs> slow it down. Why was he, why were you logged? If he wasn't living at the time, why were you logged into his Reddit? I don't use Reddit. So it's not like I would go onto Reddit and log out. So there wasn't like a, yeah, there wasn't like a time for me to go and log out of his account. And then at this time, well, yeah, Empty, if you were using like seven accounts, account dude, I'm not gonna lie, using seven accounts to glaze, using Harp. seven different Emp Dave accounts to glaze Tom, more of a slight against you than me, dude. Not just saying. Place, I think. Our place. Place. Yeah. Our slash place, yeah. Our slash place. Um, and this was because the the roommate in question shared the computer with the same Windows account that you used. The same Windows account? No, he literally used my computer. Yeah, sorry. When you log into Windows, you could have like your own account. Oh. Yeah, I guess. Like on, on Chrome or Firefox, you'll have like your uh, also, no, no, on Windows, Windows, Windows. Yeah, like on Windows overall. Like you'd have a complete oh, computer I see. and everything. Yeah. yeah. So on your computer, there's like t Tom and then roommate as mm -hmm. like possible logins. That's what you're saying? No. And you were log no? Sorry. Okay. I was saying that like that would be obviously what you'd want to do if you were sharing a computer with somebody. But Tom didn't do that, didn't have separate Chrome profiles apparently. Just let the guy use his browser and his Windows account. I have no idea why. He yeah, claimed they use different browsers. Wait, if they if he claimed they use different browsers, how would this even happen? Yeah. Do we? I'm super curious, and maybe we don't have this. Do we have a quote of Tom mentioning the lack of a Reddit account or the use of a Reddit account, or has anyone like found his Reddit account and found like posting at the time? Because I'd be super curious. Like, if we could find a, an account of Tom and him posting like same day, for example, um, that would be like a clear. And we might not like it. It's, it's possible that we just don't have that. I'm just curious if we do have that evidence. As far as I know, nobody's ever come up with anything else. So those two accounts, Queen came on to argue with me about it. Said pretty quickly, okay, I don't, I don't think that you are your sister or that your sister is you. That's fine. This other account, I believe it's you. There wasn't like a way for me to prove that it wasn't me outside of. Did you? Did we go through the actual posts? And do we believe that like a roommate of Tom would make these posts and not Tom? Because I believe uh, you get not really... super. I'm just trying to clarify if we have any evidence of Tom talking about his Reddit account or like any evidence of that. Just because I'm just trying to like make sure that I get all the I's and T's crossed. Because oh, yeah. if it's possible, no like if because I know about. he's a digger, if he's found Tom's Reddit account and he can find huh? Tom posting within like a close day before he's on stream, that would be pretty concrete proof that it's probably his alt, right? Well, I had one minute. Is one minute good enough? Is one minute on the screenshot? Is one minute on the screenshot good enough for you, Erudite? <laughs> Is that close enough? And if we don't have it, we don't have it. I'm just curious if, because I know Queeman is like the god of receipts, so I'm just wondering if he like has found anything like that, and maybe he hasn't. Again, from what he said, he's logged into that account after the sock account was discovered. Well, what, what she's trying to do is she's trying to show Tom seeing a post or showing a post immediately or, or pretty quickly after. He, he's after one's been posted by the by the quote unquote alt, right? It's almost so, like they that is exactly, their blindness. That is exactly what we've got here: is him showing a post from that account immediately after it's been posted, one minute ago. This has just been put. He has just put this. I don't think Reddit count seconds. Could correct me. It might say just now if it's below a minute, but one minute ago, basically as quick as you can get. He has screenshotted that. Screenshot it and post it to Twitter. That. That comment. So that's about as good as it gets. I feel like you can't ask for much closer than what Erodite's asking for, to, to what Erodite's asking for there. I don't think you'll get any better than that in a situation like this. Interesting. So yeah, yeah, I do know, like, just that after the posts were being made, they're mostly, they're almost entirely being made about him and the Destiny subreddit, that it is, his, like, it's logged into his browser and it's on his stream. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um... Okay. And you're stating to this day that it's not your account. Absolutely Correct. not. It's not yes. your account. And I can show you the video um, of the guy like claiming. Can you share your screen and open Reddit right now? 
Yeah, so this is something that's been floating around. Kankamore said this. He's uh, Apparently, this is a piece of evidence that Tom's been using behind the scenes. Is He's got some video of this guy saying, hey, that's my account. I posted on that account. I don't know exactly what the video is, exactly what he says, exactly how verifiable it is. I don't know why he wouldn't just say it on stream or why. It... Lots of questions, but we'll see. Apparently, Kankamore has seen it. Yeah, he, it's said, a he said, Kankamore has repeatedly said to me, it's evidence, but it's not proof. But Tom keeps going around saying he's proven it. He's proven it to everyone behind the scenes that this was not him. <clears throat> so he has like the switch accounts like right there. Um, he's like, leaning on them. He's saying, like, he's literally, I've, I've got DMs of him saying to people, Kank, I've proven to Kankamore. Kankamore can tell you I've proven it wasn't me on those alts. I'm assuming it's, it might still be logged in on another browser, like depending. Have on you browser. unlogged your editor after this debacle? I do think I eventually. Uh, it was his roommate, roommate, not his editor. Wait, 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 hold on. Have you unlogged your roommate since then? What do you? I did eventually so, log out of it. Yes. So after Queenman pointed this, did you immediately? Because my response to somebody was saying that this is an alt, and I'm, I'm serious that it's not. Is I'd be like, fuck, I need to like log out of this account right now so this never happens again. Did you log out of the uh, editor's account? Not immediately, no. I, I didn't know have, how. Have to you since out. then? Uh, yes, I have logged out. So even even though his editor or his ex roommate ages ago, asked him, don't use that account. Even though he said that like six months before the original alt drama, he'd already been told, don't use that account by this guy. So like I say, best case scenario, except all this, all this story is totally true. He still looks like a fucking liar and a manipulator because he's telling this roommate, I'm not using this account and then continuing to do so. So best case scenario, you accept this story, the insane story that he's feeding. Okay. So, so what was all that shit about? You have logged out since then. Okay. Yeah. Can you? I'm super curious to see if you can just like pull up your Reddit. Hold on. That ish weird, bruh. That so ish you weird. Why, you, you to to why are you using people's accounts, bruh? That ish weird. That ish weird, bruh. Yeah, go to Reddit. I just want to see the account that's logged in for now. Home foolery. It's, it's not logged into anything. And then press login. He's contradicting himself. In your clip, he said he mistook it as his second Reddit account. Last night, he said he never ever used Reddit. Yeah, so he does. I believe he does say at some point here he doesn't have a Reddit account. I think that's untrue. I think he has a Reddit account. Maybe he's banned. I think might be the case. I, but I am pretty certain he has said other times he had a Reddit account that he has posted on Reddit. With all the accounts. <laughs> yeah, there we go. What was that? And then press login. I don't know if I want to do that with all the accounts. With all the Water. accounts? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Like, so we can't see it here, but it, it doesn't show anything in the end. And he just signs in with, a, 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 I think, his Tom Foolery thing, and it just creates a new account. So that's a, new Reddit do, account. A, a Reddit account on that. Whatever the, the, the account he signs in with is. I don't think he's ever been logged into this before. I think it just created one this. Karma. Um, how do we check, like, the date that it was made? Do you know, Jay, or does somebody oh, know? How no, to I'm just settings? saying that probably was just made right now. Probably yeah, on a profile, I'm it. assuming. So when you when you log in with a Google account, it just creates a Reddit account. Yeah, December 18th, 2023. So okay, back then, I guess. Yeah. Oh, retard alert, retard alert. Naomi in chat spotted. We have been going through every claim. We will go through the alts. We've been through the, the rhetorician claims. We've been through the sex pest stuff. We're going through everything because it was all laid out in this. We're going through everything. Retard, retard. Okay, they said that's when the account was made? Yeah. Looks like it, yeah. It says there's one post. Uh, What's the post? There's nothing there. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. No, one post or karma. No, one post karma. Uh, one post karma. Which means you probably commented on something and get an upvote. And so you're claiming that your editor was logged in. Does your editor have a computer? Again, roommate, but no, yeah, he doesn't have a computer. Right? No. Edits for you as well. He did, he did like shorts and stuff like that for me. He helped with the admin okay. on the account as well. He was a mod in my chat. Yeah. And he has no computer of his own. He didn't at the time, though. He was living with me because he was out of pocket. Okay, and like no laptop or anything? Or phone? He had a phone, yeah. He had my okay. old phone. Okay. I'm just curious if he had like a phone or some other medium, like why he's using your computer to log in. He was using my computers regularly for like editing and whatever he wanted while I was at work. Okay. But never um, had his own account. Okay. Never gotcha. had his own Google um, any... account. Also, never had his own they had, and Windows he didn't make his own account in Windows, and he didn't make his own account in Chrome. Which I, again, strains all credulity for everybody who's ever operated on the internet, but yeah, hey. yeah. My family also we, uses it's definitely weird. Even there, that's with us on that one. Computer, I haven't made accounts for any. Can I just be point blank? Is there any? Because I don't even care if you have alt accounts. To be honest, I don't give a fuck. But do you have alt accounts? Like, 
I have any? other accounts. Most people do. Most yes. people have alt accounts to at least to like troll through and see what people are saying. Them or like they're people who block them and stuff. Do you yeah, have, I have account? other accounts? But at least the people around me knew that those were my accounts. Like at least people close to me knew. Like this is my name. This is my account. Stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. But not on Reddit. Um. No. But there's no arrangement of this guy having like his own separate like Windows or anything. He just does everything on your computer. Right. At the time. Okay. Um. Anything else? Because I know we've got the rhetoric coach. We've got um this like alt account, maybe not alt account uh, situation. Is there anything else in like the pattern of lying that's going on? Um, what else? Tom, have you said you spent months the... in solitary confinement? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I do think we're going to skip over like the prison side, because it's like, like I say, like, I can bring up like the police report of him being arrested for credit card fraud and say, oh, see, this isn't what he's saying it is. Uh, but then he can just turn around and go, well, I wasn't caught for the other ones. Or he can say, I think there's also a thing where it's possible that there's some crimes that uh, are unable to be seen because the way it could work is that during his probation, if he did a pro if he had a probation violation, got sent in for that, that might be wiped at the end of his probation period, and so there wouldn't be a record of it. So I, it's hard to tell a lot of this stuff. It's hard to verify. You can't really disprove any prison story or anything. It's just you sort of have to just look at it, look at the consistency of the claims. See how coherent his story is, how credible it is, and just you can't know something. Right. All this information, I think, all this information is relatively public. But I, I, I was told, and a lot of this stuff's complicated because it's obviously it depends state to state and isn't the same in the UK. So I don't, I don't have the basis for understanding how all the fucking prison systems records work, and it's all in different counties and all this shit. Someone told me that if the probation period's over in some states and some counties it will wipe the record of a probation violation afterwards. So I, I don't know. It's just, it's a, yeah, exactly. JSOC spent too much time on this because it's not a good place to fight. It's like, it's so difficult to verify or disprove any of these things. <clears throat> How long were you in jail for? So it was, I think a total of 13 months um, between jail and state. Uh, so it's... Yeah, I think it's 13 and a half months between jail and prison. And why were you in solitary? In solitary? I got attacked by guards. It depends on which time. So when I was in county, I was in solitary a couple of times. When I was in state, I got attacked by guards. My kneecap got uh, shattered. I went to solitary confinement, I want to say, for maybe two months after that. Um, what, and what, what did they write on your... What was their citation? For what? Um, for why they were putting you in solitary. Because usually that would be like, if they assaulted you, I imagine they must have at least claimed that you assaulted them. I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was something like that. It was, it was that I was like using threatening uh, motions towards them or something, if I remember. Yeah, Kankamura did. I, it, what you think of that extreme dad thing is going to come down to whether you count a PDC as a prison, basically. Because a lot of people are going to say, well, no, it's a, a probationary detention center. It's not, it's not a prison. It's completely different. And other people are going to say, oh, it's good enough. And then Tom says he was accidentally shipped to sh federal prison for one day or something. And then, and then shipped to the PDC. So it's just like... It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Like I say, I, don't, I can't contest this because it's like... You're getting into the minutia of how... Prison systems work in Atlanta. I've got no fucking idea. I don't know how fucking prison systems work in Atlanta. I just know that he's lied about all this other shit, and these are pretty tall tales too, and he doesn't have evidence for them. So, what, what am I meant to think? What am I meant to think? <clears throat> okay, gotcha. And so how long did you spend in solitary? Two months? I think it was about two months, yeah. Jay, is that what you remember? Or when you say months in solitary, do you mean like more than two months? Like... I believe on this stream you just said months. So okay. two months, that is technically months. <laughs> yeah. But when you heard him talk about it, did you get the implication that he was like being like, it was I get the implication months. from when all of these stories that he brought up. Months. No, 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 no. I get the implication from all of these stories that he's brought up, that they're all tall tales meant to make him seem, you know, more interesting yeah. or more like he's had all of these crazy things that have happened. And I don't really believe any of it, but Again, for people hey, I just, and I'm just going to keep bringing all of them up to drugs, show that they all stream crazy stories. Like the, uh, okay. uh, uh, the numbers or uh, a bunch of other addicts and drug addicts have come on to my stream to tell crazy stories as well. Like this just isn't. These aren't uh, that fucking wild. I just thought uh, this is where the argument is coming up, isn't it? Uh, well, addicts are always telling crazy stories. Yeah. We know. We know. Okay. Um, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. 
anything? So in your mind, when I look at this list, obviously I, I see a potential pattern. I'm curious just like what pattern you would say you see, like how does he tend to lie in your mind? Uh, I think he tends to exaggerate basically everything he does. Exaggerates everything he does. Um, and with like the line between like interpersonal stuff, does it seem to you like he lies in such a way? Like, because that would be exaggerations. That's probably like lying by omission or like lying by details to like make himself not look so bad. Would that be how you kind of phrase the interpersonal lie stuff? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So exaggerates everything he does and downplays and downplays his responsibility. Like a lot of these stories just seem to tells. completely yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Again, there's people uh, asking why I don't know. Again, this is like 15 years ago, 16, 17 years ago for me. Like, this is all from when I was fucking like 18, 19. I'm 35 now. But yes, I don't remember each little detail. But yes, the ways that I tell these things is how exactly how I remember it. And from talking to my friends about these things and other people who were there and kind of like getting details from them and talking about it over and over, like reminiscing on this shit. Like, this is just, yes, this is how it is. Uh, this is how I remember all of this. Okay, gotcha. Um, so I guess I'm curious to know, because this pattern definitely looks such a way to me. Um, Sorry, I'm just getting some DMs about the linguist stuff. Huh. I'm a linguist by trade. I work in linguistics. Okay. That is apparently from another. I just got linked that clip, and I started listening to it, and I'm not sure that that proves anything. But okay, we'll look gotcha. More. That's what like that's didn't what I'm saying. The folder. The I didn't have a folder. Didn't have a folder. I'm a linguist by trade thing. It's actually someone else saying that. Oh, but they're they're saying I'm also a linguist by trade because you said you have a focus on linguistics. I think. Um, there are some uh, links that I can send um, with specific timestamps, or one of them at least. Yeah. And then, yeah. can the I clarify the apology stuff? To me, is like the the preferred uh, like way to say it. And when I said like yes, I, I like saying linguist by trade is something that I'll only like say on the internet. It's like it's uh, there's like a, a a fear that I would have like a degree or some sort of uh, like special knowledge on a topic instead of just having experience in an area. And so yeah, linguist by trade is like the preferred way to refer to it. These are not mine, by the way. It was somebody else who sent these. So. Okay, yeah, Posh Redneck said I'm a linguist by trade. I'm going to go back. I also am. Is he responding to Andrew here, or is he responding to Tom? He's responding to Tom. If you go up, but I, I literally, like, listened to it, and I was like, I don't have any reason to share this, because it's Tom saying okay. he has, like, a focus on linguistics or something. I don't, I don't think it really proves anything. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I just wanted to point out, though, that this is all just on the Tom lies thing, and we still have to go through all of the um, the sex best stuff. We haven't really gotten to any of it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, oh, so man. We need to get through this. We need to get through this. Um, I'm getting to very much stuff. done so with to me, most I've gone problem. through my stuff now. So yeah, the most important thing to me is you keep saying that you have apologized and that you tried to apologize. Did you try to apologize to Kelly in the initial stream that you had when you jumped on Just Licks after you made those like inappropriate comments? Yeah, I think that's what I just sent you. That's what they We are four hours in. I mean... Okay, so what I want to understand is when you were talking to Kelly and Just did you try to apologize? Just Do you believe that you tried to apologize? And she said, I don't want Oh. Dude, I just got a rip. I got a rip. I'm trying to understand when you went on Just Licks thing, right after posting the comments about showing her tits on stream, she's an ethos celebrity, stuff like that. When they brought up your comments, I'm, it sounds like you did not even attempt to apologize in that. Is that correct? Okay, in the first one, no. So you doubled no. down and you remember that the same day? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so then the next question is when do you claim you made the apology? On the on this So, okay, right. As we're going through this, someone please try to remember whether this is worth watching or not. Um, or if I want to skip over any of it because this is two more hours. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's worth it. It's the link you just sent me? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to send it to Jay. I feel like I've gone over well. the stuff that I wanted to present for this, and now it's back onto the Kelly stuff. It's like I've said my thoughts on the Kelly stuff 600 times in 600 different videos. I'd rather not do that again. So then we should also be clear that after this, he went on stream and said, I'm not actually apologizing for anything, right? Right, yeah. So after this Wick thing, you apologized, and then you did the stream. Why did you do that? So I, there was like a 10, 15 different things that I was fighting against at this point. So I already made those apologies. I felt like those stood by themselves. So when I say later, I apologize for nothing, I didn't feel like I was taking those away or taking them back in any way. I already said them, said them very publicly in front of everybody. Like that, yes, stood by itself. And I'm pretty sure even on that stream, I reiterate an apology. Um, so I, yeah, like the, towards Kelly and that stuff. So yes, I wasn't mm -hmm. like taking it back on that same stream. I, I reiterate the apology. Um, also, again, I'll just say that this was like a month ago. I'm kind of dying here. I don't really remember when. Yeah. Sorry, I don't remember the first stream very well. So any character, any characterizations I have on it are just going to be if I think something's wildly different from how Tom recalls it. I'll point it out. Yeah, same. Yeah. I, I don't. Sorry, Pigeon Kelly. Uh, yeah, sure. It's it's weird to pull up Instagrams, uh, but I mean, who cares really? Uh, but if a girl says she's uncomfortable with it, you either have to kind of just stop and give it up, or expect she's going to fucking hate you and think you're a total perv freak. Yeah, I did do a Bridges reaction, but uh, it, it was, well, it wasn't really a reaction. There was like a separate segment up to that video. 
don't have like a great memory of all this at this point. That's super fair. Uh, I'm just gonna listen to this apology. It was a few nights. Kelly says that you made an initial apology, which I'm starting to feel that way, which I agree is not an apology. Not an apology at all. There, I, I, from where I saw that, I, I did go back and forth from I apologize you feel that way or I apologize for making you feel that way, and it wasn't. Okay. Could you understand why most people, if you oscillate between those two enough, are not going to feel like it's an apology? Yes, of course, yeah. And okay. I've talked about this so, a number of times since. To say, yeah, that wasn't, the, that wasn't a good way to do it, yeah. Most importantly, do you think what you did by posting those things and going down, do you think it was, like, incorrect? The, the stuff in chat, yes. You're, you're talking about yeah. the chat messages. Yeah, yeah, the stuff in chat, specifically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and so then, later on, you make the stream, because in your mind, you're fighting a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I suspect you're probably not surprised. Yeah, hey, you... yeah, you spoke out. We get it. Okay. One of us. Sure. So when I say that, like, um, you don't have the best relationship with women, I think that, that probably implies a lot more than I'm trying to say. So I apologize if that's okay. Like, here we go. So I just went. Not sorry. That's giving like a, a an evaluation. Really, really, really fucking this. I think it's fucked up. It sounds like you have trying to. Oh my god, this is pathetic. This is pathetic. Whole other thing. I thought, like, yes, I apologize for nothing, and like I was in the midst of a whole other thing. That sounds just best. And do you still think? Um, you built this entire community that does. It seems like there's been a number of things. So to be honest, it seems like at times I don't know if you always have. Uh, best relationship with truth from everything I'm seeing. Seems like sometimes I'll definitely lean on downplaying certain things. For example, when you were talking to me and just me, um, I had basically all the receipts from the beginning. I just kind of wanted to see how you were going to explain it. And I do think that your first description of the situation to me definitely downplayed your responsibility and the things that people were actually upset about. Right? It took me like prompting a fair bit for you to even bring up the comments about you and Kelly that you made about Kelly and stuff. And so I do think that there's probably this tendency, probably because you're being defensive, to probably under or omit certain little details that probably paint you in a worse way than you are. Um, the issue is she saying that as if he's just done that with this, with this one example uh, of the Kelly stuff? But no, he's been doing that the whole time with the rhetoric coach, debate coach, linguist stuff. He does that every single time he's been pressed on that. He's done it with the alt stuff every single time he's been pressed on that. So, but she's not willing to extend it past that. And it's like, okay, well, there's, oh, there's these other crazy claims he's making for which he can present no evidence. But, but we can't extend the same pattern of behavior, which is established there. To, to these other to these other stories for some reason it just doesn't make any sense why she draws a line there and it's just this weird it's just this, it's, it's insane virtue signal about his addiction it's it's totally nuts it's it's fine but if she doesn't care about it she should say i don't care if he's telling truth there i don't think it's irrelevant to evaluate she should say that instead of going like you don't know addicts you don't know addicts this stuff's totally true well she doesn't i don't know if she says that specifically but you, know, you get that's the vibe you get from it, right? We'll watch through it. We'll see. She was that number one. I think spicy has been clip though, if I'm being completely honest. I think it's really gross that people are trying to use you talking about your addiction as anything other than you talking about your addiction. I really, really, really fucking hate it. I think it's fucked up. It sounds like you have. Yeah, so here we go. It's really fucked up. People, people talking about your addiction. It's really fucked up. Worse way than you are. Um, the issue is that number one, I think spicy has been clip though, if I'm being completely honest. I think it's really so clip chimping, clip chimping. Where was the clip chimping? Really gross that people are trying to use you talking about your addiction as anything other than you talking about your addiction. I really, really. So she's referring to the pathological liar clip, which I did not clip chimp. I watched almost all of that conversation on stream, and I didn't even, I didn't even comment specifically on the pathological liar thing as it played. I was just like, look, should let it play. He said it was in the past. That's what I did. So this, this is total bullshit. Say. Spicy, because obviously, you know, spicy, what, what are they saying there, really? My, my stream's going to be considered, if, if this shit is going on, they're going to consider stuff on my stream to be kind of part of spicy. <clears throat> that is not what happened at all. No one was clip jumping it. The person in this conversation who said the most damning thing about that clip was Emp Dave. And Emp Dave's not spicy. Emp Dave's not from Spicy Jam. He's, he's completely separate. And he was the one who said that Tom is currently a pathologist. He, he phrased it in present tense. So this idea is just totally out of nowhere. No, you did. You said you said he said Tom said he's a pathological liar. You phrased it in present tense when you first said it. Jay Stalk said it in past tense the whole time. Said was a pathological liar. You were the only one who said is a pathological liar. <clears throat> oh yeah, saying nope, not spicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Nope, not spicy. Sure, true. So th this idea that it's spicy clip chimping. No, people have seen that clip. Some people run with it and say say things that maybe aren't founded based on it. Sure, I'll agree with that. But it's like Spicy's clip jumping you. It's just pointing to the boogeyman. It's just pointing to this uh, this boogeyman that they can tar the criticism with, tar the talking points with, to try and make it sound bad. But it also makes fucking... <laughs> it's also like you're, you're attributing things to people or a group of people that they haven't actually said or that, people, that you don't know that they've said. It's just like what... So you're just sort you're just of like concluding just assuming like, oh yeah that must be spicy saying that because i don't agree with it that's kind of fucked really 
really, really fucking hate it. I think it's fucked up. I, it sounds like you have not the healthiest relationship with women broadly. Um, I'm not going to get into it because these, all these women asked me not to. But in the private information that I've been given, I think that you need to be much more clear and explicit with women about the nature of your relationship with them, what you're comfortable with. But I don't actually believe that you're like egregiously inappropriate with women. Um, I, I'm sorry. Always I, broadly. That's that's a bit of a statement. I can I get yeah. some sort of justification for that? That seems. Uh, I my understanding is that when you are in flirtatious relationships with women, it's not always clear to them the like nature of the dynamics. I don't want to go into it, but just to be clear, I don't. Tom, after the last month, still needs to be, it to explain to him he has a bad relationship with women. That's uh, that's wild. I don't think you're a sexist. Okay, I, I know one person example. that people have said this about. I have a, a whole host of DMs proving that that is just not the case. Well, well wouldn't one example be Mantis? Mantis calling you her boyfriend? Like, wouldn't that be one example of this where that is <laughs> not clearer than you on the next day on screen saying, "No, don't call her my girlfriend." Well, um, I, oh, I, this I, saying, I don't have a problem with her calling you her boyfriend. I'm talking about the ways that this like uh, projects a specific type of relationship on a stream. She, if she calls me that, that's fine. But it's like the problem that I had was that people kept like projecting this intimacy and this like long-term relationship that just wasn't actual, like wasn't reality. And so yeah, I didn't like the the ways that people use labels to kind of like add this uh this like grander but, relationship than what was actually there. Sure, but she's the one who used that that um that label for it right it seems that she was under the impression that your relationship was that way i, I from what i'm saying that's the way that everybody else was referring to her that's just the way that she referred to herself but that's uh it's not like a, a huge problem for her to say that sure and so maybe to clarify her and I, because i can promise you her and i have had these conversations numerous times and that there is not confusion between either one of us sure so when i say that like um you don't have the best relationship yeah. with women i think that, that probably implies a lot more than i'm trying to say so i apologize if that seems like really really strong it was more like, so not think you're like, a the labeling of the relationships or that like i could lead people to believe something whereas like i promise if, if i don't know if that's true i don't know that's not the case like yes I don't right. want to leak things, for me, so because I don't know, I get, things, I get, but I'm happy to send people things behind the scenes. So the reason that I'm saying this is when I see like a consistent pattern of confusion about these types of dynamics, it suggests to me that like probably more explicit conversation is going to be needed. And it's possible that your burden as a streamer... Means okay, yeah, this is a... Uh, no, I am. I'm losing interest now. ...means that you have to have more autistically explicit conversations with women, but the fact that there's been like a number of individuals that have been like, that seem to be somewhat confused about the nature of the dynamic, probably just means this that now, you I'm need confused. to clarify that a little bit more. But That's to be clear, I've never been made to feel uncomfortable around you. Uh, that doesn't mean other women haven't, but I certainly haven't. And it also seems like you have really good relationships with specific women. Um, I also think what's happened is there's been an absolute aggressive kind of like confirmation bias slash smear campaign from individuals that are being absolutely unfair to you. Um, I think uh, bringing up the pathological liar clip, even the way that De Dave has talked about it, he keeps talking about it in present tense when the mm -hmm. entire clip you were talking in past tense, and it is obvious if you watch even 30 seconds that you were not glorifying this behavior and you don't think it's good. It is possible. He absolutely was glorifying it. What the fuck? He was saying that he enjoyed the game and that it was like, he, he was up portraying himself as like a cool, manipulative guy. It's like, you know, Mach Machiavellian, just like Destiny. That is what, absolutely what's going on there. That's crazy. It's crazy that she's in DGG and doesn't realize how people uh, uh, play themselves up like that. <laughs> Just because you are recovered now, you might still have a behavior pattern left over. We might slip into your destiny does that on stream, like nonstop. A little bit tenuous with the truth, which is why I'm saying that might legitimately be a little bit of an issue. I'm not super sure. However, I think that people painting you as this like sexual predator pariah is just so beyond the line, not okay, and way more egregious than is realistic. And I think it is yeah, actually it was comparing so wrong. To light people... Yagami while he's going through his divorce, it's <laughs> so base. We're using things like, well, he said that they're lying, and they said that they're lying, but we don't really know. Um, I want to make sure that when you talk about like nature's relationships, obviously you need to make sure that everyone's on the same page and it's possible that maybe you're missing like subtle cues. Um, so One that's super possible. That, see, like, I feel like I am very good at this. Like I feel like I'm very good at it and it, like I feel like I make sure that people understand that I consistently like, have conversations Neo. with people that like these are things that I worry about a lot and I, yeah, I like, I, that's the only reason that yes, that I would want to keep pushing on this is because yes, I, I feel like in any case where people would bring this up, I feel like I can be very, like prove that yeah. this is just not Yeah. Place. So when I'm saying this, I guess I want to put it in the couch of, I am not confident that if we like hyper, hyper artistically analyze everyone's dynamics in the space, that we would always find issues to exist within there, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they would be the same nature. However, I really do believe that people were drumming up a lot more content than was necessary and I think you were really bad PR. You're not going to fucking horrible PR, and you should have never said those things about Kelly. Ever. <laughs> just, it doesn't matter if she does like sexy stuff online. If she says she's not comfortable with it, rather, she's not comfortable with it. That's kind of the end of the conversation. Um, I think people saying that the high stories are a lie. We have no way to know. I think people being shocked about you imitating drug dealers, uh, sorry, swap people to fuck over other drug dealers and not believing you have no idea about addiction. I just don't even know what to say to that. Um, and I also think that smearing you based but on. You like, can pay yourself the light off to go on a date with a girl. Yes, but I'm, <laughs> I'm doing that. I'm referencing destiny when I do that. Your past that you try to overcome is really, really, really fucked up. Just to be super clear. Um, I do believe that just like has engaged in a fair bit of confirmation bias, but he's also picked up on like, mm, this seems a little bit with uh, the truth. I think Queen has done what Queen does, which is like trying to drum up as much controversy as possible. What? Um, uh, I think Queen's narrative overlaps entirely with mine. I don't believe in any okay. sort of story. Oh. I don't know the story. I don't know anything about addiction. Julie, but this one apparently has to be true. Yes. Yes. Jay Stock spitting. God damn. So it's not even that. Other thing. What do you mean he's done this with a whole bunch of other stories? You like the problem for me is that you'll stop hold on. The stock account is the main one, right? I agree that's going on. But again, that's in the pattern of I think he tends to omit information to protect his responsibility. And I think that he tends to like sometimes like uh, uh do things to, like problems up. Having an alt account to like make yourself seem awesome isn't even that big of a deal. I, if he's lying about it or not, I don't actually care that much. Who the fuck cares if he's like making a cringe alt account to like promote himself? I literally do not care unless he's lying about it. But to be honest, why the fuck would he lie about it? Yeah, he spent months in solitary confinement. Um, that is saying two months in solitary confinement is completely plausible. You do realize that's that. Right? Uh, I don't think it's possible for this person based on the way they engage with the truth at all times. Based on what? Especially when you're talking about his addiction. It sounds like when he was in the midst of his addiction, Wait, he did a lot of bullshit. Is he addicted when he was in prison? He was coming. He was in. He was charged over like criminal and like addiction related charges. Were you not? Obviously, he was addicted in there. How was he addicted after the first month in solitary? I don't understand. Wait, I'
You do understand what were you abusing? Oh, are you? Are you going to say that you're always an addict? Like that's fine. No, I'm not going to say you're always an addict. I'm going to say that it's important to understand that if people have been addicted since they were like 12 to 14, it typically takes a minimum of two months for them to even start acting normally. And just because he's in in jail, it doesn't mean he's in recovery. Because the pattern of behavior that's making him criminological and drug addicted isn't going to change just because he's in jail and because he's not actively addicted to the substance. What recovery is isn't just sobriety, but it's looking at your past behaviors and all of your flaws and all the fucked up shit you did and going, how the fuck did I end up here? And how the fuck do I stop doing this? And so it's fair that you don't know this about addiction, but I'm being super hard on here. Do not use his past addiction and the things that he's done in it to try I mean, to see. I, I just quite agree with that because it didn't sound quite right. T two months in solitary isn't even that. Out of the ordinary right the average stay is 27 days so that's more than double the average stay i mean i would uh, and 27 days is twice the number that the un believes constitutes torture okay whatever man character now it is Wait, so beyond fucked up and he wasn't addicted when he told this story right he's telling the story about being in solitary years after he got out of prison no yeah but you're saying that you think he's lying about the story yes right why you just don't think he was in solitary for two months no that's why? not even an irregular thing, dude. That's not even how it's really not. That's not. Why do you think he wasn't in solitary for two months? Because whenever he tells stories that he's the only one who, who knows the answer, he thinks he's the only one who knows the answer, he misleads and lies by omission oh, the entire time. Just like he did with you when he thought you didn't have the receipts for this entire... Um, this entire yeah. so, so he, he, went to, he went through four times what is believed to be a torturous amount of solitary confinement. Like, but the way that he lied, I wanted to have like, a different conversation with her. I wanted to have like a philosophical conversation with her about like women in this space and what it is that like we can do to make things inappropriate. And the, literally the reason I didn't want to get into those details. Oh, like, also, all of you guys jumping on to have this fucking. He got attacked by guards. Clearly, he could provide documentation for them, right? That he was attacked Are you guards. fucking kidding me? What is wrong with you? Why the fuck do you have documentation from the warden who put him in solitary confinement after the guards injured him? They would have claimed that he, he assaulted him. Have a medical him. report from being in prison? He might have a medical report about his knee, but that wouldn't prove whether he was in solitary or whether or not it was the guards that caused his injury. Do you have a medical report about his knee? They don't have any of those things. No evidence. Nothing ever. That's not a thing. No, of course. Pretty sure they have the document. Putting you in solitary. If sure, I, I, I have a friend who's a prisoner. Oh, yeah. They would have to document that he's in solitary. I'm not sure in the states if it's solitary since it's a private corporation. Do they have to release public records of how long prison mates had to spend in solitary? Is that a thing in the states? I'm I'd not be sure. compelled to release it. I, no idea. I really have no idea. Yeah, I, I do know that he wouldn't no have his knee busted completely and not have any treatment and not get any report on it at all. Where do you think he would be getting these ideas about prison? Like, like, where do you where do you think that he's pulling these ideas from? Is he just like trying to make himself um, seem more hard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where are you? Documentation. You fucking discuss it. It's crazy. You getting your ideas about addiction in prison from? Where's where's your like experience or knowledge on these things? I'm not understanding. Because if I'm maybe you know a lot about this shit and I'm fucking dumb. I, what claims am I making about addiction in prison? You I'm said saying, it's ridiculous saying, to imagine that he's in solitary for two months. It's ridiculous to imagine that he's yes, forced to do I don't imagine that he's done anything that gets him put in solitary, unless it's completely to protect him from other inmates. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm, saying, I'm saying, I'm saying that I don't believe anything he said about his past. Pretty much okay. everything he said about his past, I'm positive he's lying about because anytime he has all of the facts and people are asking him for for any sort of indication of what actually happened, he misleads everyone all the time, constantly. You, yeah, but your like your evidence for misleading all the time is I'll grant you he does omit certain bits of information that make him look a little bit more responsible. That has nothing to do with him lying about his past addiction behaviors. Are you kidding me? I've already granted you that I think he does lie by omission. I think that he does try to somewhat underplay responsibility at times, probably because he's being defensive, right? I've already agreed to that. I'm trying to figure out why you think that this somehow would translate to him just lying about his addictive past. Sure. And like the things Wait, that occurred. What, what am I, sorry, his addictive past? I'm talking about when he was in prison. I'm talking about what he was part of while he was regularly doing drugs and in and out of jail yeah. as a result of being criminological and drug related. What, uh, okay, you know what? Uh, all right, you, I, if you believe all of this, that's fine. I, I don't. I'm going to maintain that. other people who have met my friends and who, who have talked to them and who like have verified these things. Like this isn't like a, a, a rare thing. And I'm happy to have other people talk to them, offering behind the scenes people who I trust that aren't going to record shit and go pass it around. But yeah, like I have a problem with people talking to my friends who were there for these things, who know about this shit, uh, talking to like my family members who had to deal with my fucking uh, busted knee and all the being in the okay, hole and all I'm this just going to offer one more thing. And in good faith, I think a lot of people don't understand what addiction looks like because why the fuck would you? And all the people in addiction know exactly like everyone knows about it. Nobody really understands the field. And so just you're being you can manipulated tell me by somebody who is an addict. I think, I think you're being manipulated by Kleeman who has an active interest in constantly smearing people for content. Yes, yes, I'm like Light Yagami. Yes, I'm like Light Yagami from Death Note. Yes, that's me. That's me. Offer one more thing. And in good faith, I think a lot of people don't understand what addiction looks like because why the fuck would you? And all the people in addiction always act like everyone knows about it. Nobody really understands the field. And I so think just you're like, being you can tell me to, by somebody who is an addict. I think you're just I think being you're manipulated. being manipulated by Queeman, who has an active interest in constantly smearing people for content. That's what oh, I think is going on that for might you. Be true. She is this is blood libel. She is trying to kill me. She is a Nazi. I think she's probably I think I've got reason to believe. I'm getting suspicion that she's a Nazi. Yes, very Hitlerian vibes. I'm not saying she's a Nazi. I'm saying there's no smoke without fire. Literally, in her case. That's a stolen line. She is trying to kill me. Given any opportunity in the 1940s, she would kill me. She would have me dead. That's what she's doing right here. She's calling me snaky and sneaky, saying I'm manipulating. 
I think a lot of people don't understand what addiction looks like because why the fuck would you? And all the people in addiction always act like everyone knows about it. Nobody really understands the field. And I so think just you're like, being you manipulated can tell me to, by somebody who is an addict. I think you're just I think being you're manipulated. being manipulated by Queeman who has an active <laughs> interest in constantly smearing it. people for content. That's oh, what I think is going on for you. That might be true. And but my I asked issue him for some like, of the timestamps and he said, "No, nah, I'm too tired. Fuck off." So, he didn't even care enough to it's come true. and try to that. skewer Tom here at all. He just sure, was like, nah, probably because it's, it's a month old and it's not a benefit to any, any, him anymore. Well, it kind of but, is because I'm doing it today, right? I'm doing it today. I just didn't want to organize all of my fucking, I didn't want to get the folder out. I have to go through the links to figure out what they wanted. I can just lay it all out when I've got time, when I can chill. <clears throat> I ain't doing that shit when I finish stream. I've been stacking paper tonight. The this aside, this doesn't mean that you haven't engaged in confirmation bias with Queeman. So I need you to understand, you keep saying in jail, he wasn't addicted to substances anymore. And it's possible that you just don't understand this. I'm not saying once an addict, always an addict. All right, I'm saying, guys, please remember to like, subscribe, don't buy membership, buy membership, buy super chat if you can. Thank you very much. Or to discord.gg slash Queeman, twitter.com slash Queeman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Typically, when young boys do lots of crime stuff and it's drug related, they will get thrown in jail pretty periodically. As somebody who has worked with those boys in jail boys. and in mandatory lockups, like drug decompression, drug she's decompress like drug Dude, drug she's decompress like having a jail, she's glitching. jail pretty periodically. As somebody who has worked with those boys in jail and in mandatory lockups for drug, uh, like drug decompress, drug detox. Just because the substances are out of their system and they've fully withdrawn, the criminological and antisocial behavior that they're often inclined to do, which is facilitated by both the drug addiction and the criminological lifestyle, still occurs, which is why recovery typically requires people to move out of the city that they were a part of, and they have to not just stop using substances, but particularly if they're relapse prone and criminological, they have to change every single thing about their lifestyle. And so it is absolutely possible that he got into a fight with the guards. I think he said he was being sassy, which wouldn't surprise me at all. The guards went in and kind of fucked him up and they probably did a little bit more than they planned to. And then they threw him in, in solitary because it definitely doesn't look good for your guards. Okay. So even here, she's acknowledging that he's probably being dishonest about the story because if you go and listen to him, tell this story, he presents as if he had no fault. He got the shit kicked out of him, thrown away. There was a massive conspiracy to cover it all up and he could never do anything about it ever. That is the story that he tells. But even here, she is saying that she thinks that would be dishonest if he said that. So she's already acknowledging that Jay Stalk's right. Because that's exactly what Jay Stalk, I don't think Jay Stalk would necessarily say that entire story is just completely made up. It's just there's no evidence for it. Well, I mean, maybe you would. I don't know exactly what Jay Stalk said. But I, mean, I would not say that that story is necessarily completely made up. Just that it is, once again, another tall tale that strains credulity where some of it might be true. But it's impossible to tell how much, and given the amount we've seen him lie already, there's no reason to believe it without evidence. This would beat people up. And this does happen, and it's established. It is possible that he's lying by omission and is making it seem like the guards were just crazy when, in fact, he was, like, slinging shit at them and doing way worse things. That is possible within Tom's pattern of how he talks about these things. But I don't believe that he's just full-on lying about his addictive past because of the nature of how addiction works. And I'm not, like, super mad at you about this, just like I'm just saying. All of these things he's describing that he could have possibly done, the SWAT dressing up, all completely makes sense. I'm not shocked to hear any of that shit because of the shit that I've heard my clients have done. Insane shit that people do when they're in the mix of addiction and criminological lifestyles. It's it, my audience is full he says of boys because like, she's talking about blacks and people have been to prison because I share my stories about these things because I talk about this openly who all know that this stuff aligns completely. There's not like a bunch of prisoners and addicts running around being like this guy I'm, doesn't listen, know what he's talking about. This sounds outrageous. This sounds like he's making it up. Like they all know that this is just kind yeah. of normal shit when you're in. What I think is actually happening market. here and I'll just I'll just lay it out. I'm pretty sure that Erudite is taking her clients and projecting how they were they were weak and they were taken advantage of onto Tom. And I think Tom is a completely different breed of individual. Based on what? So, based on what? Based on what? Based on what? <laughs> based on all of these stories that are fake. I don't believe I don't believe that you don't have any I don't believe it. Hey, I, the, I, the thing is, this isn't even the point because the issue isn't. Jay Stalk is, is fucking up here by presenting a firm, positive counter narrative, right? What he should be doing is saying something to the effect of, well, just as easy as you could say, this is what addicts are like about these stories, I could say, this is what addicts are like in terms of lying. 
it's just that it goes both ways. That's what he should be pointing out to her here. But no, he's, he's fucking up because he's presenting the firm positive counter narrative instead of uh, uh, pointing out the fact that there's no reason to believe one or the other. <clears throat> I do you think that it's, any ounce of proof that any of these stories is real? So, oh, so no, 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 yeah, just real quick. I'm happy with I like this sounds outrageous. Like I just don't believe it. That, that's fine. It's the shit where people keep saying he's lying. We know he's lying, and you just don't have any evidence, and you just keep saying that I'm lying. There's never say, any hey, evidence. Sounds out never outrageous. any evidence. I don't believe it. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like that doesn't bother me at all. But people keep just, acting like we've proven the lies over and over, and that's the fucking shit that. I didn't say I've proven the lies. I've been. They very said that you have a pattern of very explicit that it all strains credulity. And once I've heard like a dozen of these stories that make no fucking sense, I'm starting to go okay. I don't believe any of it. Well, hold on. When you started this out, you said that he is explicitly and intentionally lied. You did say that to me. I wrote down the quote. And also, if you just said to me that you think that just because somebody is not detox that they're not an addict why did you say that tom wasn't an addict when he got put in jail like why on earth did uh, you say that so if probably you what that? i meant there what i meant there and and after you talked about it i acknowledged i said to you explicitly hey um if, unless you mean that like they're going to continue being an addict or that they're always an addict that's fair and you were talking about that concept at least that they maintain a lot of those behaviors now that's fair what i meant is he wasn't driven by physical addiction swap pot's done mm -hmm. okay but what, We've been what, the, what does that have to do with anything know, comes nobody back. was ever claiming that he was being driven I'm by physical just, addiction i'm literally just explaining what i meant Hold on. So when I said, she, do you she almost has an I am your expert moment here. Understand that just because somebody is forcefully detoxed, it doesn't mean that they're not an addict. You said he wasn't an addict when he was in jail. Why would he have done these things? Are you trying to tell me now that you were saying you understand an addiction? Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Why won't you just let me finish? Sorry, I'm saying wasn't an addict. I mean, he wasn't physically addicted when these things happened. So the drugs weren't influencing his decision making. Obviously. Obviously. Okay. But obviously, when I asked you that, I was aware that he wasn't physically addicted, and so were you. I was asking, do you believe that addictive patterns exist afterwards? And you said he wasn't an addict, which is to say, you don't believe I am. I'm those two things. Things. When, I, when I'm saying he's not an addict, I mean the physical addiction. But obviously, some of the behaviors would persist. I'm just not very, I don't talk about this topic very often. So that's uh, super fair. There's some clarification that has to happen. So the idea yeah, and that's all fair. That's all fair. The issue is that when I say, for example, like that, that's super fair. So then, you know what? Honestly, I'll just give you that one. Sure. And my, my entire point is that he was decision. no longer an addict. He was long clean when he was starting to recall these stories and tell them. And I think that's where he's lying. Okay, these you things are think... not like these cool things that make me sound fucking amazing. These are this is like the most embarrassing fucking shit from my entire life. That's fucked up what? my entire yeah, life. Yeah, he seemed so fucking embarrassed in all those stories. He just seemed so embarrassed. That I spent my entire life trying to recover from and trying to fix. And this is stream is the only place where people have found this shit interesting, where I can talk about it and it sounds like an interesting story. Everywhere else in my fucking life, this is a detriment and it has fucked up everything for me. So this is not like a okay. thing where it's like this awesome brag that I got my fucking ass kicked by yeah, some cops. So I was a fucking about. awesome guy who stole from everybody and stole from all my family members and all my friends and nobody trusted me and i was this horrible liar that was just this oh so, such a cool guy listen to me brag about how cool i was everybody that's that sounds fucking insane dude that's this literally what you do shit from my life that i spent the next 15 to 17 <laughs> years trying to recover from and trying to fix it's just it's just so delusional to pretend that people won't uh, present immoral or self-destructive acts as cool when they're talking about them it's so delusional which um which jail did you go to tom it, it's called uh paulding pdc i've gone over this on stream oh i don't i literally don't know someone told me to ask okay so I'm sure you didn't see the stream. Would you be willing? No, to no one would ever present anything they did as as a uh, any bad thing they did as a cool thing. Actually, it's like someone said. I think someone said in Discord last night. They said, uh, "I heard them say, it's like, it's like when there's that guy who talks about how often he's cheated on his girlfriend, and it's like, what, why, why are you talking about how often you've cheated on your girlfriend all the time? Why, why did you keep talking about that? You seem kind of proud of it." Agree now, just like that. When he was talking about the SWAT stuff, when he was talking about that stuff, he wasn't trying to make himself look cool and interesting. He was actively talking about bad things that he had done that were not no, good. He was I not glorifying. I know. I, I don't stream? think. I don't think he's actually referring to events that occurred. That's the problem. Yeah, I understand stories, that you think addicts exactly. could do that. Yeah. I don't believe that those are events that actually occurred. Why would he tell me those things in a non-glorifying way? He is a pathological liar to, make to this day. Interesting. He, because because you don't actually have the facts, you can't go check any of the things he's talked about. So he's gonna uh, he's gonna upsell his story just like he upsold pizzas. The, the way he's just he described it to me in that conversation is the exact type of tone and response I would expect from a recovering addict who realizes that the behaviors that they would have glorified in the day and that they did think was cool was horrible. Absolutely, addicts that I have treated, you can always tell a difference. And honestly, in the capacity of an addictions counselor, there's a difference between when clients talk about their criminological stuff. See the go, they do make me sound really cool, don't they? Oh wait, no, you mean oh you mean Tom's stories? I was gonna say erudite talking shit about me. I just read someone say about erudite talking shit about me, but no. I... Erudite makes me sound way too cool. 100%. That is true, though.
Like, why did you say that God of Receipts shit? She's a mark. Because of the folders. But it's like... It's just a few clips. And they're still glorifying Why is she confiding him, stealing from family members with him dressing up in SWAT gear? Did she do that? It's on stream. Oh, I don't. I literally don't know. Someone told me to ask. Okay. So I'm sure you didn't see the stream. Would you be willing to agree yeah. like that when he was talking about the SWAT stuff, when he was talking about that stuff, he wasn't trying to make himself look cool and interesting. He was actively talking about bad things that he had done that were not no, good. He was I not think, glorifying. I, no, Did I, you watch I the don't stream? think... I don't think he's actually referring to events that occurred. That's the problem. I understand that you think addicts could do that. I don't believe that those are events that actually occurred. Why would he tell me those things in a non-glorifying way? Because he is a pathological liar to, to this day. He, because, because you don't actually have the facts. You can't go check any of the things he's talked about. So he's going uh, to upsell his story just like he upsold pizzas. The, the way he's just, he described it to me in that conversation is the exact type of tone and response I would expect from a recovering addict who realizes that the behaviors that they would have glorified in the day and that they did think was cool was horrible. Absolutely. Addicts that I have treated, you can always tell a difference. And honestly, in the capacity of an addictions counselor, there's a difference between when clients talk about their criminological stuff and they're still glorifying it versus clients who are aware of how fucking horrible it is, how they ruined other people's lives, how they're ruining their own life, and how basically no one really has a good reason to forgive them. And the best they can do is try to pick up and go on anyways. The reality is that I don't know why he would lie when he's talking about it in the latter way. If he was talking about it in the former way of trying to make himself seem cool, I agree that he could make that shit up. I'm talking about when he's talking about the bad shit and he seems embarrassed. There's no reason to make up shit when you're actively trying to not glorify, but you're talking about what a piece of shit you used to be. Why would you make up extra stuff? I have a question. Can we rewatch that? Is it because 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 if he says I stole from my parents, that doesn't sound cool. There's nothing cool about that. I just kind of just sound like a piece of shit. If you say, oh yeah, I was a uh, I went and stole from other drug dealers pretending to be SWAT doing heists to take their drugs. Yeah, that makes you sound like you're, you're targeting people who are more deserving. It makes you sound like it's, it's more complex, it's more sophisticated, it requires you to be more competent, it requires you to put yourself in danger, which makes you sound brave. He was talking about sending his girlfriend to pretend she broke up with him and go and find out where their drugs were as part of the mission. So it makes him seem like a leader. It makes him seem stoic, like someone who doesn't care if, you know, his girlfriend doesn't appear to be with him. But but he's okay with it for the mission. It makes it, it, yes. This is all. This all plays into a very specific image of himself as this sco stoic, badass, cunning, destiny esque, really. Because yeah, I I want to say that the way I'm remembering it, it looks like he's, he's relishing gang. in the he's a gang. That's Th the way it appears because he has a big smile on his face. You're talking about where, where I'm talking to Kyla? Where you're talking to Kyla. Yeah, yeah. This People is that embarrassing that I might be wrong. We'll just how I it when we'll I was just watching we'll just it. Just just clear, there are times where, yes, I'm telling a story that's fucking wild that people are going to find interesting. But in this scenario, no. Like, this is me, like, talking about me, how horrible of a person I was, that I was a liar, that I was, like, this piece of shit that nobody trusted. And I'm smiling in, like, a way that this is embarrassing. I, the, the entire, like, conversation there was me talking about how I had to make such dramatic changes to who I was in my entire life that th this is uh, your stream this isn't the let's clip. just watch it and let's see like, I'll, I'll, I'll give empty and maybe you can like point out the points where you feel like he's like glorifying it this isn't jesus the christ okay let's oh, burn yes, this. uh no what you're sharing isn't the clip you're yeah. sharing the you're sharing. Yeah, you're sharing yeah. we've already done this clip um, once you watch, are you getting too tired and okay. right out the hot i was like a compulsive liar for, for sure like literally would just do it without thinking like can we hold on can we rewind from this and like actually go see the context from before like what i'm asking and stuff yeah because i just don't like obviously one time, Tommy and his friends had to pretend for a whole weekend that his Uncle Bernie was alive, even though he was dead the whole time. It was so crazy. Haha. <laughs> Obviously, it's, yeah, it's no, trying to happen in such a way that I don't see any of the drug talk from before. Yeah, so I went back like a minute. Do you want me to go back more or how much? That should be, I think that should be good. There's nothing okay. really to go back further. Just tell me to go back more if you want. Massive red flag to everybody else. The, the worst women in the world. Like, what is going on? And I thought, well, I'm, I'm a freaking like massive red flag to everybody else. Like, I've got, I've got like a bunch of crimes. I've, you know, had a horrible history. So um, I was like, I gotta like become the guy that the women that I want to date, that they would want to date. And yeah, like the way that I talk now is not how I talked back then. I was like very much a wigger and like, um, was very, uh, yeah, very, very different. And so yeah, I, I was do, like, yeah. What, like, what were the steps that you took? Yeah, to like, like grinning the, the whole time he's telling this fucking story. Right up, it's crazy. I was like a compulsive liar for, for sure. Like, not literally glorified, would just do it like? without thinking, like on accident, like, um, oh, sometimes. Oh, he's so ashamed. I, I, I was working, shame as well. um, I think at, uh, subway at the time who was running the subway and i remember like actually telling my boss something and seconds later being like shit dude i don't know why i just lied about that that was stupid like i, I literally just made Girl, that up. did you really just my bad and uh them looking at me like i was the freaking weirdest person in the world that's <laughs> so embarrassing to, but they'd be like small little white lies or was it everything like they would be both small little white lies and big lies to get out of like, situations yeah sometimes it wasn't even like big lies to get out of situations it would just lie just like just for something interesting because i enjoyed the game so like when i was selling drugs and all that there was just it, it was part of the game. It's to like manipulate everybody else around you. So we had a crew, but we weren't like, we were always trying to get over on each other as well. Like and we were always trying to seem like he was... each other. And um, we were also doing like different, 
I tell stories about like, where there were other drug dealers that I was friends with that I would get my girlfriend to tell them we broke up and see if she could go over to their house and she would go over and hang out with them and she would text me and be like, hey, their drugs are in this spot. And then we would pull up in SUVs and like SWAT uniforms and break in and take all their drugs and uh, and leave like we were the police and um, crap like that. And so, yeah, we were always like trying to get over on. I just want to be clear. We believe that they pulled up in SUVs and SWAT uniforms and tried to break into somebody's house. We didn't actually have real SWAT uniforms, but as close as we could get. Not real SWAT uniforms. Okay. Like the clothing and everything. Do you want to go back just so we can listen to it? Hey, all the no, drugs no, no. and just like the, the, the conversation. Did you know the people you were breaking into? Uh, yes, and this that and the part that I'm talking about there. Yes, it, it was another drug dealer. Um, but yeah, like this entire part, it, it, because you were around and showed the context, we're talking about relationships. And we're talking about the fact that it's dating, like really horrible women who keep cheating on me and treating me horribly. And then I realized, oh, I'm the fucking problem. I'm like a, a piece of shit that nobody that I would want to date would be willing to date me. And so then I go down a list of like problems with myself and why no woman that I would want to date would ever want to date me. Like that's this is literally me just talking about why the people that I want to date don't want to date me. This isn't self glorification in any way. And leave like we were the police and um crap like that and so yeah we were always like trying to get over on one another as well and so it just became normal to always lie to one another to always try to uh get over on one another and eventually you were just like streaming webs that weren't even connected to something in hopes that they would be connected to something way later down the line that would help yeah. you and so yeah you just ended up lying for for no reason sometimes so i guess my question is is anyone who's like sussy of tone, is anyone <laughs> listening to this so i'm trying to listen to this from the perspective of like does any of this flag me as being so deceptive or as being horrifying for example, because i'm obviously biased that i don't think it is no, are you guys watching okay. it for truths that would suggest truthfulness and non-glorification because no, the main no, things you two did is positive to point out just chill. two things that might confirm your bias which i don't think is a fair way to engage with tom especially over such like serious things and especially bringing up such a very serious vulnerable history which is his addiction history to use against him like i said i didn't know that this was in context to addiction and I still, even watching back further, I still didn't see the, uh, that it had anything to do with addiction. I didn't know this conversation had to do with addiction. I was that talking about drug dealing. What I'm talking yeah, about. Talking about drug dealing. Uh, he talked about how he was a massive giant red flag because he was an addict who was selling drugs. So I'm not really understanding what you missed. Uh, at the same time, he also apparently, oh, there was something with credit cards. Oh, he got caught and sent to prison because his girlfriend would use a credit card that he's stolen, right? Mm -hmm. So apparently he had a whole bunch of like schemes for taking credit cards and not getting caught using them, using them yeah. debit cards as well. Super, and then he also was a camper yes, who was actually uh, yes, broke into people's houses and yes. knew where to get their jewelry. And and there's, there's, a specific, there's a specific arrest record to one's credit card, but that's beyond the point. There's no way to like tell, because you know, a lot of the stuff, his biggest claims are not the things he got arrested for. That's the thing, right? Stuff like this SWAT story, he didn't get caught for that, allegedly. So <laughs> wait, there's no record of it. So it's like, yeah, we can we can prove what you were arrested for, but obviously we can't prove or disprove the things you weren't arrested for. And the things you were arrested for are not particularly impressive. It has residential burglars and uh, I just want to be clear. Yeah, yeah. I so literally like in, all of these stories seem crazy to me. That's fair. I just feel like you are super not aware of like what this industry is. Because I think part of what you're describing is like a whole list of like, how is it possible that he's like a junkie who's also doing like high heist cat burglary of jewelry and also doing credit card scams? Like, is that the threat you're pulling? Like, how are you a junkie and, and dealing drugs? And also working in some way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and also not getting caught for any of these things. So he yeah, did all these crimes and he got caught for none of them. Well, you got for some of them, but am I understanding your dubiousness of being like, I don't really understand how you're both like a drug dealer junkie who's yeah, also yeah, like, proof of, like his um his arrest record or something. I would definitely would go a long way to believing. Sure. So I will yeah. say, of my clients that are criminologically involved, almost all of them do credit card fraud. Most of them, obviously, a lot of women do prostitution. Kidnapping is also, if you're gang affiliated, the triad is typically kidnapping, um, assault, and drug trafficking. He's done a lot of drug trafficking, so credit card theft and drug trafficking are decently common. The only thing that I'm not sure about with the cat burglary is does he mean that he's like breaking into jewelry stores? Or, like, what is he breaking into pawn shops? Because houses. Breaking into houses. So again, breaking into houses is, in my experience, decently typical addiction behavior when they're also criminologically involved. It's not all addicts, just to be clear, because there's a lot of addicts that don't do crime at the same time. But when you do crime and you have this addiction element and you're selling drugs, this lit in you, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I'm actually shocked to hear that there isn't. Do you have multiple assault charges? You must. Do you not? Assault charges? No, I don't have any yeah. assault. I don't have any, like, a violent You crime. must. Okay. You must. You must have multiple assault charges. Living that life, you must have multiple assault charges. Is, is in my experience, decently typical addiction behavior when they're also criminologically involved. It's not all addicts, just to be clear, because there's a lot of addicts that don't do crime at the same time. But when... That's her profile of an addict. So let's see, surely. But wait, he must have multiple assault charges. Surely her evaluation had changed a little bit. When you do crime that. and you have this addiction element and you're selling drugs, this lit in you, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I'm actually shocked to hear that there isn't. Do you have multiple assault charges? You must. Do you not? Assault charges? No, I don't have any, yeah. assault, I don't have any like, a violent crimes or anything. No, because he was like a good guy. He was like a good guy criminal. So he doesn't have assault charges because he did all this crazy stuff, but he did it against other drug dealers and it was all totally fine. He was really cool when he was doing it and he was like a good guy. But like not like like a good guy. Just like not that bad of a criminal, so like it's kind of cool that he did it, you know. Okay, did you assault people though? Uh, like I was in fights and like that. Yeah. She's saying most criminal addicts, yeah, it's like she's saying that most addicts have this this trifecta of like kidnapping. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's just like it was like it's like junkie on junkie violence. Somebody reported this. Yeah, or like at parties we get in fights, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And so like, yeah, I mean, yes. lots of people who drink go to parties and get in fights. Well, and then there's also like I'm not all of, like, people who get into physical fights with like other guys who were trying to rob us of our drugs and that like we were like that they were gunshot. Like... Wait, Tom, can you tell me what you went to prison for thirteen months for? Or is so, that too much information? No, it's a, it's a little complicated. So I was locked up for burglaries. I got out for two weeks. Then I was locked up again for uh, debit card theft and debit card fraud. And then uh, and then I also had a probation violation from the burglaries before that, and a probation violation from a weed charge as well. Uh, there
with each other was 10 years probation. And so I had to, uh, so that's, that, that was all of the things that I was in trouble for because it's, it's a bunch of violations and the, the charge of debit card theft and debit card fraud. Okay, so you, you weren't caught on trafficking ever? On trafficking? No. Like drug trafficking? No. Okay. What were you selling? Uh, tons of stuff, mostly uh, Octagon. Uh, what kind of money were you moving? Uh, nothing big. Like you were selling pills probably at the time. Were you like a, you were a junkie dealer, right? You were like a Right, so, so that's when he says successfully dealing drugs. I was not successfully dealing drugs ever because I was using them. And so there are parts yeah, where like, our money's way up and we're all doing really well and we're selling really well. And then there's other parts where we literally have nothing and we're robbing everybody to try to get more money to, to sell again to support our habits. And so, yeah, it's kind of always back and forth. Yeah. So I am definitely sus that you lie by omission as far as like when current drama is going on and you don't want certain details to be known. You'll like soft pad over them. I am not convinced that you're like a chronic pathological liar who just like makes up shit about your past. And to be honest, just like, I don't know if the argument I just believe he is, is sufficient, especially when you're talking about like standard junkie behavior. I will agree with you. I honestly don't know if I believe Tom that the alt account isn't his. I think it probably is. Um, the only reason I think maybe it isn't is I don't know why he lied at this point. Um, and uh, I don't like that he like lied by omission to avoid certain responsibilities, but I don't think that that is in line with any of like, the junkie. Okay, I think I'm, I okay, I think um, all the, there's just so many, I, it strings fragility again, um, that there would be this huge pattern of all these things. Influencers saying, hey, this guy, um, he misrepresented his qualifications to me. I'm positive we can find that, by the way, the misrepresenting of the being a linguist. We did. Yeah, I'd be curious to see that. We did. But, we did. Like, okay, so if we start seeing and connecting the dots on these and we did. basically proving that he's lying, are you going to start flipping on a bunch of the things you said? Uh, I might flip on, I mean, I don't know if I, what I think about the rhetoric coach stuff. I just don't have receipts on it either way. Um, I'm not saying all allegations are dismissed. Um, it's totally possible that he lies about shit. It's not obvious to me that he's lying about the junkie past. He might be lying about like understanding, for example, that his relationship with this person was terminated. Not, I wouldn't be surprised if there was like maybe some padding. That's super possible. I'm saying specifically the addiction stuff does not strike me as a lie in any way. And I think you guys should genuinely stop trying to use it to smear him because it's kind of gross. Okay, but, this is the first time I've heard that about how he lied, and I literally got timestamps for people with stuff, right? So I just figured I'd go through all of the examples that people have had for the entire time he's been on YouTube, yeah. I guess. And, and if I any of what I'm saying comes across as me being uh, shaming him for his past when he was a junkie or anything, I definitely did not intend it that way. And uh, I know that he obviously had addiction issues. He's on some boxing now. So I mean, that obviously is proof that he had an addiction that he's working through, which I applaud you on. Get better. That's awesome. I also totally believe he was an addict. I, that yeah. is nobody, here, totally nobody here ever thought he was an addict. Yeah, you guys think that he's laying on, not you guys, I know Jay thinks that he's laying on. Should we, is this Britney Simon shit from earlier good? Is this worth watching? Apparently, did I get mentioned? Is that true? What What did this uh, nasty individual say about me? I'm sure it was demonic in nature. Members only? You're joking. All right, I guess that's just part of a sick conversation. In fact, I might just play it for a moment because uh, I need to grab a snack or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I... Uh... So maybe this did get addressed, and because I was listening at two times speed, I passed over it. Okay. But um, yeah. Did you did you ever get asked by Queeman about the claim that you became a rhetorical coach off the back of a course on marketing for work, and that it was uh regarding Pizza Hut? He did not ask me about that. No. Can okay. you send that to me? So. Uh, yeah, I yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'll okay. just send, I'll just send you the link. I've got it okay. right here. So, I worked for a law firm. Uh, it was called Gant and Associates. Um, I, I sent it to your DMs. Okay, I'll look at it in a minute. Um, so we had a marketing division where, what the main thing that we were doing was selling. Uh, ah, crap! I'm blanking on the word, but it's pretty much like remortgaging. Um, oh, were you selling, were, were you guys like trying to get, uh, people on like, I, I forget, I forget the fucking name. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. We'll skip over uh, it. But yeah. Okay. Real so anyway, so, so they had a sales team calling these people and pretty much saying like, Hey, um, we work for a law firm. They're going to go to the court and they're going to battle for you and make the, uh, banks renegotiate your contract and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so they started this thing. They had like a bunch of different offices where everybody was doing cold calls from. This is like shortly after the, the housing crisis. So like everybody was doing the remortgaging and all of that crap. So, um, then they, wait, are you just trying to say refinancing? Is that all you're trying to say? Yes, sorry, I am trying to say refinancing. That is one of the okay. things. But there's okay. there there was a bunch of different things that they offered, but that is what I was trying to think of, yes. So this is in oh, I want to say 2013. Um Okay. And so I'm working for them. Um I had other friends that worked there, they got me the job there. And Everybody else that worked there, they were like freaking cokeheads and just like degenerates. They were, they were 
all pieces of, like sleazy uh, salesman type guys. Um, and so they they ended up the like actual head office said we're going to have a course where we want one person from every office to come and we're going to send them through these classes um, and they're going to then start writing scripts for everybody else and so we went we did the classes i don't remember how long it took it wasn't long it was maybe uh a couple weeks uh at minimum maybe like three or four weeks at most um but so then once we started doing that like they they sent me from our office because of my uh background in like being a convincing person <laughs> so they sent me i went and did it and then when it's i like came four week class or whatever yes uh, uh how how sorry just to get into ahead. the specifics was it like um like for instance when i did training for hvac before i ever started the career um i had like a 12-week course but we were there every single day for like four or five hours yes we were there so for I, every single day for four or five hours exactly yeah, yes okay um and so then after that then i went back to the office and then we had somebody who came and did on the job training and would show us okay. like how to do it and so mainly the most like the biggest thing is once you write the scripts you have to actually go coach everybody on like inflections how to say things um like tone of voice all of that and um i eventually got fired from there and i think then i started running a car wash and then uh, i realized i could make more money as a delivery driver at pizza hut so i left and went and became a delivery driver at pizza hut and then i uh they asked me to like the the manager uh, quit and so they asked me to become the the gm and so i started running the store and then uh and then i moved up to what was called an area coach which means like you run the managers of the stores right, and then yeah, yeah yeah and then I once that. i was there i think this is 2016 2017 um they i like i'm working like with the office the like all of the top dogs and the franchisee um and so we were talking about what i used to do for that company and they said we've been thinking about starting a division like that do you want to help so i was like yeah sure so we started uh like a linguistic marketing sector of the company and they put a lot of money into it and we designed like entire processes for coming up with scripts so we didn't just do the stuff that the other company like taught us to do but we also started using uh like polling we started using uh studies we started using all sorts of other crap um every possible thing at our disposal to try to find out like the most efficient most effective uh words letters colors like all of that crap um that once we finished our stuff we still had to send it to other people to get approved and they would do that but then we also went and did the on the job uh training where we went and worked with uh managers in stores shift leads assistant managers and then like showed them how to teach the employees and like how to how to talk to the employees and all of that um this is like answering phones helping with customers and so once in a while you would run into like a really big issue and we would have to uh so like you know when somebody calls uh, pizza hut and they answer the phone and they have like a list of things that they say and they'll give you deals and crap like that right yep so we're telling them like exactly what order to say things in we're changing the wording of things to make it sound a little bit different to make it sound better than it actually is um when covid first started one of the biggest problems was that they were canceling deliveries at left and right and um 
because no, we, nobody had delivery drivers. So every pizza I had like two to three hour wait times. And so they wanted the customers to come pick up the food. But every time they did that, customers were saying, if I have to come pick it up, I want it for free. Like I ordered delivery, that's what I was promised. And so I want it for free or I want it half off or something like that. And so we we're just losing tons of money, like insane amounts of money. So one of the things that we told them to do is we said, when you call a customer, tell them that they're, uh, that you're going to change the price and make it cheaper for them. So that was like the main thing is we say, you call a customer ahead of time, tell them that we have a long wait time. So I don't know the truth of this, but according to Beckett, uh, I th yeah, apparently that's fraud. Uh, not sure what the truth is there. Not sure what legality on that is. I don't know what advertising law is like in America. I'd imagine it would be fraud here. I don't know what it's like in America. So I just, I wouldn't make a statement on it firmly. But it's certainly weird. Ask them if they want to change it to carry out and say, if you come pick it up, we will change the price and lower it for you. Um, this made it to where already they feel like you're appeasing them in some way, but we didn't actually okay. change anything. All okay. we did was it. change it to carry out. It was, so anyway, so my point is, well, that's the kind of stuff that we did. Then yeah, eventually yeah, I left yeah. and moved to Domino's SSA, and worked for not... Domino's. SS, if you can provide uh, uh, clarity, that'd be good. And uh, and then I, I did the same thing for Domino's for another, I want to say two to three years after that. Um, okay. So, yeah. so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should I clarify, is it, it's technically true, so it's fine. Well, that's what I thought as well. That's what I first said. That is what I first said, is that technically the price is going down, but then the argument back was, no, the price isn't changing. You're removing a service. <clears throat> I guess I guess my big issue is that when I think of you saying that you're a rhetorics coach... Just to be clear, I haven't said that in a long time. Like, I felt like well... <laughs> that was bad branding for me. So I, yeah, I, I, well... I stopped saying that a long time ago. But yeah, go okay, ahead. whether or not you think it's bad branding, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't think you aren't one or weren't one. But when I think of, like, I feel like maybe either you have either said you were a linguist in the past or... I said I work in linguistics. Lingu okay. To me, even though you could say you worked in a department that that's relevant to it feels like there's some academic backing to that even if you're no. not explicitly saying it no i explicitly I... say i have no academic backing i say this all the time I, I i specifically say all the time i say i work in linguistics because i don't have a degree i don't have like a um i i'm not like what you would traditionally call a linguist online in the real world, yes, I get to say I'm a freaking linguist and it doesn't mean anything because I'm not acting in any sort of authoritative position. Here, I be, I'm be i very specific to say I am, I'm not a, an authority as in like I have a degree and no, I can... No, you, you do bring it up in conversations as if it is an authority to be answered to. Like when we were having that conversation between me, you, Ozzy, Katie, Dave, yes. um, you, you do kind of like bring that up as a point to say like, no, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yes. You need to be the one that's shutting up. But it's like- Not, I don't think I do that. I say it because I'm there to have the conversation with them. I feel like if they're talking down to me and saying, uh, you don't have any clue what you're talking about. You shut the fuck up and listen to me. That's normally the only time I ever say it is if you're like, if you're making it sound like I just have literally no clue, I've never even thought about these things, and now I'm just getting right. on stream and just talking about it out of my butt, that's just not the case. That is not the yeah, case. I, that's not I true. Mean, and that's the only reason you, I bring it up is because I want to have that conversation, and I want them to at least respect what I'm saying enough to engage with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, the two people who you are saying that to frankly, don't have respect for that kind of shit anyways, because it's Ozzy and Katie, and uh, they were telling you you don't know what you're talking about. Well, mostly Ozzy, 
actually. Well, but he was saying, I'm assuming Ozzy's the bubble guy. Uh, he is the guy who he's the black man who was sitting there trying to refer to etymology oh, as when talking about words. Okay, yeah. the, well, so the bubble guy, I brought it up with him, and I brought it up with okay. him because he uh, he was saying you don't respect institutions, you don't respect academics, you're just making stuff up as you go, and so I I brought it up with him, and I was like, no, dude, like I worked in linguistics, I wrote papers on this stuff, like I have papers that are used in uh, in universities, like I'm I'm telling you, like I I'm not just talking out of my butt. I respect the institutions that we're talking about, and I understand them, and I was trying to get him to engage with Azzy and Katie. When they're denying how we come to definitions, yes, again, I said that and said, go look it up. Like, look it up anywhere. Just look at how any dictionary comes to its definition. So I'm not saying I'm the authority. I'm saying I understand the authorities and I'm trying to get you to go look at them, right? Yeah. Um, when you were talking to Beckett the other day, you did say, I mean, this kind of gets to the linguistics thing, is that you were telling Beckett that you've written papers on linguistics. To me, again, no, no, even no, no, though you no. don't have academic... No, I didn't say that. I mean, we've we, we've seen that clip where he literally did say that, haven't we? So we need to go back... Oh, you guys remember it, right? Uh, maybe I need to go find a timestamp, because that conversation was like a week or two, or, well, probably only a week old. But you definitely the, said that. The only... So the only thing that I said that I wrote papers on was the... was the gender doc. I might have to go back and look, but I don't think that that's the case. And I'm okay. not trying to like, like, get no, you. No, I mean, if I said it, like, I, I just... you can pull it up. It's not a problem. I'm just saying, like, I, I, that's the only thing that's coming to mind right now in that conversation with him. Or maybe we're talking, if we're talking about just like papers, like, um, just like on general linguistics, sure. Like the the stuff that you have to do in well, training. Well, wait, wait, wait. Is... You can't say, you can't say that you can't. He wrote papers in training for his cold calling job. Say just general linguistics. Linguistics itself itself is a general term to describe a field. Sure. So I'm talking about in the there's not like a linguistic marketing is not a specific linguistic field it is general linguistics being applied to a specific field and so the there isn't like a, a better way to phrase it than that because it's not it's not just uh like applied linguistics or um or pragmatics because you're yeah it's more than that like yeah, there's a I, lot. I get, yeah, and, and maybe I'm misinformed or like like underinformed, but to me, when I hear you appeal to authority when it comes to the linguistics issue and when you're talking to people and you've said in the past that you're a rhetorics coach, it does feel like you're making an making an appeal to authority that kind of like subverts the conversation. Well, cool six sounds quite strangely sober. This was the literally this was immediately after i went on to press him about the alts immediately after sick called in and press him about the credibility <laughs> and and to me so this shows is that what? you have some authority July that people don't and so they should just listen to what you say because that's why people bring but up i don't think that's how i engage with it i don't think that's true like i understand i so i understand why people think that i do but when I'm engaging with them, trying to get them to engage with me, and I'm talking to them like I would talk to anybody else, I'm not talking down to them. I'm not preaching to them. I'm not saying, like, I know what I'm talking about, so, excuse me, so just listen. Like, that's not happening. I'm there to talk to them about these things. I'm there to have those conversations. And um, I think if I said, hey, look, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about, and you just don't. Um, and so now I'm going to use this title to make you just listen to me, then sure. But that's obviously never what I do. I'm there to actually engage with them. I, I don't say it while I'm sitting by myself. It, and I, I've said this every time I cringe every time I listen back and I hear myself say it because I hate 
I hate hearing myself say it because it sounds horrible. Uh, Wait, we must have loved this stream um, then. But when I'm there to have those conversations with those people and I'm trying to get them to engage with me because I'm engaging with them, I don't think that I'm doing the thing that, sh that you're making it sound like I'm doing. Yeah, I, w I would say that even if you feel like you're not doing that, that's fine. I understand there's a lot of people who think they're communicating one thing, but to other people, they're definitely communicating another. But every time you bring up linguistics or rhetoric coach, you are uh, you are making that appeal. Yeah, like it doesn't even have to be an intention at that point. Uh, it would be the same thing as me like trying to bring up HVAC or plumbing, even if even if the other person knows exactly what the fuck they're talking about or what I'm talking about. The minute I bring that up and the minute I bring that association to me, I am now saying that I'm the expert on this situation. Okay. I mean, in the conversation with, um, with Beckett, he's saying, I don't like bringing up my education because then I'm like telling people that I'm the end all be all in this conversation. And I'm telling him, no, you're not just say it. Cause like, you're you're just trying to tell them like you have information on this you know enough to to have this conversation like you're capable of engaging on it like stop saying that it's just this like you know you're you're now in charge and they all just have to sit down and listen because this is what i'm explaining to him in the conversations yeah i don't think that's true i've i've had tons of other people who have degrees in things and they'll bring them up and to me that's like oh cool okay so they know what they're talking about they're able to engage on this subject right um maybe okay well that's that's all I got. in the conversation I I'm, I'm trying to convince beckett to bring the stuff up like that's what i'm telling him over and over it's like no bring it up okay. like I, I was just bringing up Beckett as a uh, as an example of like a general issue that I have, mm -hmm. um, but I mean that's that's all I wanted to know was basically where the uh, the linguistics thing came from, uh, why Pizza Hut was being brought up. I don't uh, know whatever marketing uh, course. Um, yeah, I haven't looked yeah, at the yeah. post yet. I don't know why one is linked. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you'll see it. I'll uh, I'll stop this conversation because frankly, I don't want to waste any more time on this. But okay. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to know where that came from or if there was even any legitimacy oh, to it. I, I, yeah, I'm done with this point. Which this it is, sounds like there is, the but um, yeah, you'll see. Anyways, later, Tom. All right, later. Reminder, Tom calls himself a rhetorical okay. coach when in reality he took a course on marketing for work. So, yeah, it's not the course that, <laughs> that I'm appealing to. When I say I worked in linguistics, like just six months ago, I quit my job and... Uh, and just walked out. When I'm appealing to that, I'm appealing to my experience in that field. I'm not appealing to the class that I took for two weeks. I'm appealing to my experience there. That so he he he's saying he wrote papers as part of this class, but it was two weeks long. Has given me somewhat of a better understanding than it seems uh, most people have in this space, and then it's given me an interest in linguistic philosophy to where I've spent a lot of time reading other books and listening to what a bunch of other people have to say. Well, it's about what it. papers are um, pamphlets or flyers. So yeah. I was writing, writing cue cards. You have to hear the whole thing they're saying and try to understand the point they're trying to get across. Wait, are you saying that to me? Tom is pulling the Kyla. No wonder he defended her. Well, yeah, I, I agree with her on that. Well, that's stuff, prophetic. Yes. That's prophetic. Let's be real. Most people are fucking cavemen when it comes <sighs> to communication FFS. I don't think it's most people. I think that my issue always becomes that people are like politically motivated in the in their reasoning when they talk about this stuff. And so they'll say like, well, a word means X because that would be really convenient for uh, for leftists, right? That like that would be great for trans people if this word meant this thing. That's why it means this thing. And so they're... You can't take one and then say it means the other now. Like, uh, it should mean this, so it does mean this. That just doesn't make sense. And so, yeah, that's normally when I start getting into this. And it's not just leftists who do this. It's, um, I think it's most people because I have much more negative That was about leftists. Yeah, maybe. Oh, like, I feel like it's just people in this people, space. 
when they it's bad faith drama farms. They have a political motivation behind what it is that they're trying to get across. I know it's a poli it's it's come uh, alt right. That's what it is. So like, I uh, a conservative. If we start talking about what is a woman, they'll start conceding like all of my points fairly quickly. But then they'll say, yeah, but what does that mean for society? Yeah, did you ever think what that means for women, though, Tom? How do you think women feel about this? And every time, like, that, that's just not how we come to definitions, Tommy. Like, I'm sorry, but that's just not how that works. Like, <laughs> I can't say, like, well, I think this definition is a little inconvenient. So let's just say that's not the definition. Let's just say that's not what the word means now. A linguistics coach and a rhetoric coach are different. Yeah, well, so I, at my job, I didn't teach linguistics. I taught, I taught rhetoric. Um, the name of the field is linguistic marketing, but that's because of the process we're using to write scripts. But once we write the scripts, what we're teaching the employees is rhetoric. Like, can we please play pretend? No, no more. Uh, the okay method of using language, just decide what you want things to mean on the fly. I don't think she decides what she wants them to mean on the fly. I think she... I think that she's doing the same thing that I explained about the conservative, where she's saying, well, it would be really good if a word meant this. So I'm going to say that's what the word means. Tom, can you give us a quick overview of the prescriptive versus descriptive lines of thought in linguistics? Ooh, I'm not even sure what you're asking for. So like prescriptive versus descriptive. Prescriptive means this is how I want things to be. Or sorry, this is how things ought to be. And then descriptive means this is how things are. Um, when you're talking about what a word means, you are t you are making a descriptive statement. Like you are saying the way things are. And generally you're talking about pragmatics in that case, where you're saying like, this is how, um, this is how we use the word. Therefore, this is what the word means. But yeah, prescriptive, you're just saying like, You're saying how you think we should use words, what we should use them to mean. Um, and you're kind of like saying, this is what I think the world would be better, or I think we would get more utility, or I think we would uh, be able to describe things better if we used it this way. Uh, it's just fucking uh, waffling. Most of the stuff from the class, like I don't remember a lot of it. So I'm like kind of like, tapped out. This I remember there was a lot of <laughs> I'm struggling. stuff about like uh, syntax and... Uh, like semantics uh, that I just don't remember very well. Most of the stuff that we learned was was like super basics, like crap that uh, a lot of people learn in high school when it comes to actual grammar and literature and all this, but the processes were the important part. The processes of like actually understanding words, understanding how that makes somebody feel. What is it that they hear when they when they hear something? What is it that they're, uh, what is it that's being communicated to them? Uh, what is like an emotional state that people get from a sentence or a word or crap like that? President Sunday video on Tom's credentials incoming. Yeah. So one time he jumped on and he was like, hey, so you said one time that you worked in linguistic marketing. Did I hear that right? And I was like, yes, I did. But I, I don't have a degree. I don't. And he's like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. And just started moving on. I'm like, why don't you care? You just just a couple of days ago made a massive deal about Kyla. Like. I feel like I have to like say this while you're here so that you don't think I'm saying something else. Jesus, we got there. We got there. We did it. Is that the Tom Tent done? Are we good now? Do we think we can move on? Do we, do we feel like we can move on from a Tom Tent?